Ladies and gentlemen, you are seeing the stuff of history books. There has never been a U.S. election with this much intrigue. Sure, Bobby Kennedy got gunned down at the Ambassador Hotel in California in front of everybody. JFK got his head blown off in Dallas. There's been some incredible stuff, but those were big events, but isolated. It's ongoing. As the establishment media tries to defend the Clinton crime family, they are burning themselves up. They are immolating themselves in their lies. Everyone sees through it. Scientific studies show between a 6 and 9% trust rate in mainstream media. The AP says 6%. And by the way, they're right there, right there at the bottom of the barrel for mistrust. And the exercise we've seen in the controlled corporate media in trying to poo-poo Hillary Clinton, clearly having a seizure, clearly collapsing in New York because of the incredible heat of 80 degrees max is illustrative of how these people are going for broke and have nothing to lose because they've basically already lost. Now, we've had medical doctors on, and there have been massive numbers of medical doctors on record, including, what, 70-plus percent in a major national uh, medical association who were polled last week. We ought to pull that article again that came out and said the National Association of Doctors and Surgeons that clearly she's got serious medical problems. Dr. Drew, who's not some right-wing Republican, came out and said she's clearly got serious medical problems, and he was fired. And then you see Hillary collapsing. She has these smaller seizures, but sometimes they get more intense. That's why there is a individual, the mystery man, the black man that orders the Secret Service around, who is there with the EpiPen for convulsions. This is the reality. I have family that has epilepsy. I know what it looks like when you're sitting there at the dinner table with somebody and they start going, and you know it was a really good day at work today, and they go, boom. I mean, this is what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. And then they just sit there and go, no, you're a conspiracy theorist. If I was in a hospital and I was walking down the hall and I saw Hillary the way she looks, I'd say, that's a patient right there. She looks like hell. And then you've got the coughing fits going on for years and over a year in the hospital and secretive brain surgeries and not releasing her full medical records. We had our reporters in Ohio last week. And there's an ambulance and then Hillary goes in a tent for 45 minutes, they rush in with a big gurney. There's EMTs in body armor. Then she comes out, gives a speech, has to cancel it. She's coughing and hacking so bad. And then she has to go back in the medical tent. And they're trying to hide the stretcher. I, the media wouldn't even touch it, ladies and gentlemen. You talk about going down with the ship. Here's the word I've gotten from people high level in government. Hillary Clinton had a brain tumor removed in 2012. She's had a lot of complications and strokes from it and has fallen down and hit her head many times as you saw from the epileptic seizure. We have Secret Service sources a month ago that told you about the lifts on the vehicles that have now been photographed. We have real sources. How many big national stories have we broken? Hundreds. Because we got the guts to do it. Full story coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are kicking off a new week. It is Monday, the 12th day of September, 2016. Hillary Clinton was there at a 9-11 Ground Zero Memorial in the morning. And she unexpectedly uh, suddenly had to be whisked away. There's video of her aide getting her by the arm and helping her along. And then there is footage shot as she goes out towards a van and is leaned up against a guardrail. Clearly begins having a seizure. Her legs buckle under her and she is drugged by three people, completely dead weight, into the vehicle. Hillary can never give speeches more than 10 minutes. She's never in public more than 30 minutes. She has coughing fits everywhere she goes for over a year. 
This is not pneumonia. Remember, first she said yesterday that she had been overheated. Then she told us about the diagnosis of pneumonia Friday by her doctor. She said that three years ago when she was trying to refuse to testify to Congress that she had pneumonia. We've gone back and looked. We have those articles. Ladies and gentlemen, th th this story has so many parts to it, but we, as you know, have been right on top of it. The only other news organization more on top of it than us has been DrudgeReport.com. In fact, I, uh, I'm very proud of the fact we've been on this since the very beginning. And I'm very proud of the fact that we do our research and tell the truth and have our sources. Uh, and we have been given the credit for the conspiracy theory that Hillary Clinton has Parkinson's, has had brain surgery, a brain tumor, has special lifts to get into vehicles. That's now been confirmed, by the way. But the truth is, Matt Drudge started looking at this the most in 2012 because she suddenly looked like hell and was disappearing for six months at a time. Now, we've been on it since then. But it isn't about who gets the credit. It's about who tells the truth around here. And the woman looks like she's on her last legs, literally and figuratively, pun intended. Now, the bigger issue here is we have USA Today, U.S. News and World Report, the Associated Press, and a bunch of other establishment organs starting two weeks ago. It just boom, out of the blue. What happens if Hillary Clinton dies or Trump dies? What happens? Oh, it goes the Electoral College, or we suspend the election. In fact, there's the headline. A candidate's death could delay or eliminate the presidential election. Steve Nelson, U.S. News and World Report. Now, they'll have Rachel Maddow and everybody come out and say that I said that. And then misrepresent. No, we've been saying Trump starts going ahead of her in the polls. Will they have an assassination attempt? Will she mysteriously die? Then to make us feel sad for the Democrats to get Joe Biden or Mr. Cain in. And by the way, it's now mainstream news today, Newsmax, Associated Press, you name it, that they are looking at Joe Biden stepping in as the main presidential candidate with Cain under him. And of course, they've been saying all along, they've been holding him back in the ready. So, so understand, these stories are all up on InfoWars.com. They are meeting in D.C. right now. This is official. Where is the press? Oh, obviously not there. The DNC is meeting right now on forcing Hillary Clinton out and making her stand down. Because she's the kingpin. She's got the blackmail info. She ran the White House under her husband the first time. But she's run out of gas. As she grasps for power, as she tries to remain the emperor, like a scene from the Dark Crystal, as she collapses into, in, into dust from which she came. Dust you came, dust you will return. And they're openly, we have the links to the mainstream news articles on Infowars.com, and articles written by Paul Watson and Steve Watson, who are so prolific. Paul's written seven articles the last ten hours. He hadn't slept in two days, because this is all breaking so fast. I was up till three in the morning working. So is Zimmerman and Dew. We understand how important this is. So now we have mainstream news saying Hillary dragged into van after fainting. She didn't faint. She had a convulsion, an epileptic seizure. Can Bernie or Biden replace her? Yes. That's what the news is saying. So for me, that's the bigger issue. We've won the debate that Hillary is seriously ill. I mean, everywhere she goes, even when she's walking with governors at a plant, the men are all around her, ready to grab her arms. She's got this handler who we've now discovered the identity of. We have a special report on that. Uh, the black man with the uh, EpiPen right behind her. When somebody asks her a question, he sees her start getting dizzy and flipping out. It's okay. It's okay. Keep going. Keep going. And you see Hillary kind of come back in. And I've had family. My uncle was in a big motorcycle accident and... He's on the right medications now and actually got a brain implant, so he doesn't have as many. Uh, but I've seen him many times start having one, and you can go, Joe, Joe, come come back to me. Just settle down. Calm, everything's going to be all right. And he'll come out of the little, he calls them quizzlings, but I guess they're quizzles is his little nickname for them. I've probably seen him have a quizzle 200 times. I've seen him have big seizures a few, I mean, where he's on the ground convulsing and spit coming out of him and, you know, everything else. And that's what goes on with Hillary, folks.
You can make, in fact, you can even see by the time they're getting her in the truck, she's really starting to go. And, and look, if she tries to stay on the campaign trail, she's going to have full blown ones. She's having these these petite malls uh, or these you know baby mall seizures. Anybody can see that, and the doctors have all seen it. That's the head going in circles, and she's trained herself to be able to come out of it. But that's why she can't be on stage more than 10 minutes because, folks, she's having these seizures a lot, which means it's progressing. Probably the brain tumor is back, and they just want to get her to protect the whole dynasty into office to put their people in one more time, and they are trying to carry this corpse over the line. This is biblical. This is like a Greek tragedy. This is unprecedented edge of your seat. I mean, I can't even sleep at this point. I went to bed at 3 a.m. I shot out of bed at 6 a.m. I've had half a cup of coffee. Don't even need coffee now. Because this is just unbelievable. Uh, and, and to see Rachel Maddow and all these people get up there and attack us and lie about us, how stupid they look and how desperate they are and how they misrepresented Rachel Maddow. I'm going to play this clip first. Last week in a hour-long disinformation piece, we played like 13 minutes of it, lied about us, cut clips together, spun things, took satire we've done, took it out of context. But at the very first, she said, Infowars, she's showing on screen, says that Hillary can't walk and always has a wheelchair, but we've all just been imagining we saw her walk. We didn't say that. We said the Secret Service contacted us at the RNC and said, get ready for information in the next two weeks. Three weeks later, through our contacts, curried by hand, not over digital media, we were given the intel that they won't tell us what it is. She's falling down all the time. It's getting much worse. She can hardly go out in public more than 15, 20 minutes. We've got lifts on the vehicles that cost over $250,000. It's so hard to keep this secret. You're going to see a big announcement soon. We think it's a brain tumor. And then I talked to some high-level CIA people. I'm just going to stop right there. And they said, well, I can neither confirm nor deny that there is a brain tumor, but there was a brain tumor when she spent a year in the hospital in 2012, 2013. So you don't start having seizures so bad, you can't be out in public more than 15, 20 minutes. And notice that's why she looks so drugged. They got to drug her up with the drugs that suppress the neurons, the suppressants, so that you don't have a convulsion. So that's why she looks so high when she gives a speech or is in public. That's why she has to will herself to even have any energy. I really, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel sorry for Hillary Clinton. I'm going to skip this network break because this is so important. Now, if you're a radio listener, obviously, you can hear me break all this down. The videos are all on Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, RudgeReport.com has amazing coverage. But everybody should go to Infowars.com forward slash show to see the video, the articles, the documents we're showing here on air that back up everything we're saying. But first, here's Maddow that I played on Friday, opening up her hour-long attack piece of disinformation trying to discredit us because if the mainstream media ever picks up what we're covering or even the new alt media does, which has already happened, they are done because we are on target. Let me tell you, the average news agency wouldn't even talk to the Secret Service. Do you have any idea how dangerous this is, what we're doing? I'm not up here snake handling for fun, okay? I'm doing this because I have a duty. This is real. That's why it's come out about the lifts on the vehicles. It's happening. The Secret Service cannot believe what they're seeing. In their history, they've never gone public to people. But it's that crazy. Quote, worse than you know, Alex. Worse than you say. Worse. Bongino hasn't even told me anything. They've been breaking in his house, cars, you name it. You imagine the other people the danger they're in? I, I mean... This is what journalists are supposed to do, stick their necks out for their country. This is happening. And by the way, within an hour of us putting the video up last night, it was being removed all over. This is public interest video. This is a major election. You can't sit there and try to charge media outlets for 10 seconds of footage of a public figure collapsing and try to gouge little mom and pop media organizations. AP wouldn't pay the bounty they wanted. I guess in the middle of the night, Paul Watson did, which is fine, but I'm going to get back with these people and probably have to start a legal case over this because I'm not going to set the precedent of paying tens of thousands of dollars 
3000 already to be able to show you this information and, and, and pay more money every time I show it to you. But you know what? This information is going out. They tried to not show this all day yesterday on mainstream media until this morning they started showing it. And it's because of the real media, DrudgeReport.com, Infowars.com, that the public's even able to see this. Or Rachel Maddow, if they could really control the web, which they're trying to do, she'd get up there and say there was no video of Hillary collapsing. In fact, they've already done it. They say this is just stumbling. In fact, let's show uh, CNN. CNN, Hillary stumbles in New York. I sent you guys that um, article. Of course, the big story today has been the. We're going to show that in a moment, but but let's let's go ahead and play Rachel Maddow last week. Here it is. Um, do you also know that Hillary Clinton uses a wheelchair? Her personal vehicle has had to be outfitted with a wheelchair lift because she is not a person who can actually walk. She secretly uses a wheelchair all those times you think you've seen her walking. She hasn't been walking. Did you know that? Did you also know that Hillary Clinton has Parkinson's disease? No, it's, it, these things are true. I know they are true because I read them in the headlines. Here was the shock headline on Hillary Clinton's wheelchair vehicle. Uh, just one column over from that, there was also this seem seemingly competing news. Uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, d does Hillary Clinton have Parkinson's disease? The subhead there, we can all see she has some very serious health problems. Now, what they don't tell you is, on the article she's showing the headline of, right under it are mainstream photos of Hillary getting out of her vehicle with the lift on it with the wheelchair. Now, the Secret Service didn't tell us she was using a wheelchair. They said there's major lifts on it because she can't get in the vehicles. So it was worse than we were saying. We apologize. And the Secret Service said, listen, we don't want to give you more info. We're just trying to point you in public in information you can already find. Send your reporters to her rallies. You're going to see medical personnel. You're going to see the lifts. You're going to see some interesting things because here's the secret. She's falling down every hour, reportedly. She was in a medical tent Monday in Ohio with our people 50 yards away, held by, by Secret Service, for 45 minutes before she could go give the speech that she had to cancel five minutes in with medical gurneys and guys in body armor running around like it was the end of the world. We have them, ladies and gentlemen. And then we've got CNN. Look at this disinformation. Hillary Clinton stumbles. Will her campaign follow? It's not stumbling. It's not stumbling, ladies and gentlemen. when you completely fall and buckle and they drag you into a vehicle by your knees. How does Rachel Maddow feel now? Well, Rachel Maddow already is a shadow of herself and so is MSNBC. MSNBC, just a decade ago, had shows with up to 5 million viewers a night, just as big as Fox. Their biggest shows have a half a million viewers. This show has over a million an hour on terrestrial radio and is only in the top 10 of radio shows in the radio portion, still dwarfing them. Limbaugh has five to six million an hour. Sean Hannity, three or four million an hour. He goes on and on. George Norrie, three or four, five million an hour. They are literal husk. But the newspapers and other globalist media regurgitate what they say to create a facade that they're big and important. So she knows she's discredited. She knows she's a joke. She knows all she has is a big studio. But she gets up there and says that we are saying she can't walk, which we didn't even say. But then three days later, she's falling down on her face. And everybody knows somebody with epileptic problems, it's very sad, it is very serious. Uh, my little cousin, Buckley's little brother, had a brain injury when he was a kid, climbed up a roof and fell off of it and died after decades of that complication. I mean, I've experienced this a lot, I know what it looks like, and he did the same thing where he'd be sitting there and all of a sudden he just 
do the head in the circle, just like Hillary does. We've all seen it. We all know what a seizure looks like. We all know what the start of a seizure looks like. We all know Hillary looks like hell. We all know there's a guy walking right beside her with an EpiPen to stop violent seizures so Hillary doesn't cut her tongue off. You know, I don't mean to make a joke out of this, but let's play this because we got to have some humor. It's, it, it is Weekend at Bernie's. I mean, there's a clip where they're trying to carry his dead body along and, and you know, got the head dancing like a bobblehead. Let's play that clip. By the way, Rob Dew is making a larger mix of all this and her falling down and her stumbling and all, all the rest of it. We need to put the clip of her vomiting up the green balls as well because it, 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 it's very serious and it's illustrative of how arrogant these people are. Can you imagine this woman in control of the nuke codes when she's already sold us out to all these foreign powers and she's so reckless that she knows she's had all these brain surgeries she knows she's got all these medical problems, and she's got this entire prostitute media ready to lie for her on every single front and prop her up. The problem is the illness is progressing biblically so fast. When I say biblical, I mean, this is something out of the Bible. I mean, this is historical. This is crazy. This is legendary. This is the stuff of literature. This is just over-the-top redonkulous. And... It'd be funny if it wasn't so serious because I want to explain something to everybody. Here are the headlines. A candidate's death could delay or eliminate the presidential election. U.S. News and World Report, August 30th, two weeks ago. To the day. Two weeks ago. And I said, get ready. She's deteriorating so fast that they're getting it. And I suddenly saw it in a bunch of other publications. You saw it. We all covered it here. Here's our article breaking it down. Could election be suspended if Hillary drops out? I love how we're so conservative that mainstream media said they would suspend it. We just say, could they? And then we're the conspiracy theorist. Could election be suspended if Hillary drops out? Electoral college could choose the next president. I'm going to break this down when we come back from break. Because for me, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the big story. Also up on Infowars.com, DNC to hold emergency meeting to consider replacing Hillary Clinton. They're holding it right now. Paul Watson links to the Politico and the D.C. source where they're saying this. And I was told by the Secret Service, Joe Biggs was the contact. I said, here, you take this hand grenade. He was happy to take it because he was the original contact. And I talked to him there in, in, uh, in Cleveland at the, at the RNC. And I said, okay, fine. Biggs, you want to handle it? You go right ahead. Be careful, buddy. Uh, but... Biggs is like, you think it's a setup? And I said, no, it's not a setup. Look at these guys. They're giving us high fives and stuff. I mean, it's they just totally know Hillary's evil. But I said, still be really careful. Don't get anything classified, obviously. Just get general info. And, and, and again, the Secret Service is just, just watch your motorcade. Watch your vehicles. Watch what she does. You know, just stay on her. Send the media there because the other media won't cover it. And we said, what's happening? And they said, she's falling down all the time. We don't know what's wrong with her, but it's getting bad. There's no way this can go on much longer. I told you all this a month ago on the Sunday show with Biggs for an hour. Go watch the video. We laid it all out. Secret Service doesn't even know what's wrong with her. They just said that she's falling down all the time, having convulsions. They said they heard Parkinson's. And then the WikiLeaks comes out two weeks later and says, Hillary, I need Parkinson's medication. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty much open and shut that she's got serious serious, serious, serious neurological problems. And most medical doctors and neurologists and brain surgeons I talk to say, it's a tumor, to quote Arnold Schwarzenegger. Brain tumor. And I am very sad for Hillary. I pray she repents. I pray she comes to God for her evil before she dies. And I don't wish any harm upon her. This is the time they're going to false flag. This is the time they might kill her. Claim some right winger did it. We need to be, uh, uh, you know, heads up right now for serious stuff. We're going to come back, talk about the suspension of the election. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the globalist attempting to put a quadruple 
international spy, Hillary Clinton, who openly works for the Communist Chinese, we have all the WikiLeaks proof, works directly with the Chinese president and sells favors uh, and, 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 and contact. I, I didn't even think of that. It's like it's worse than I can even imagine. Uh, who's just selling us out to the Saudis, selling us out to all these jihadi groups, uh, who is just involved in every crime you could imagine. Saying she wants to shut down the alternative right media openly in email fundraisers that have her signature on it. And then people go, oh, well, she didn't write that. And a week later, she goes and gives a speech and says, I have a dark heart, and then I'm evil and bad, and so is Donald Trump. They're coming for us, people. They're coming for you. Huh. They are conquering this country. They want to get the bitter clingers, the gun owners, the Christians, the people they can't control. And they are hyping total racial division. Soros is funding all these spoiled, rotten football players to say America's evil on 9-11 and America, you know, deserved it because we attack all these innocent countries. No, the globalists attack countries in our name, and we shouldn't have gone along with it. And the globalists work with the radical Islamicists. But I'm going to break all that down today uh, as well. And Kaepernick, who I've held my tongue on, uh, but now has just gone too far. But here's the big news. The mainstream media, we're going to play a compilation of this in a moment, has been trying to sit there with a straight face. I've got one clip here where the MSNBC host, I've also got a CNN host, gets up Andrea Mitchell on MSNBC and goes, Trump is far worse about covering up his health than Hillary. But I am a little concerned that she wasn't honest with us about this pneumonia. She hasn't had pneumonia since 2012 where she keeps falling down in public. She hasn't had pneumonia for two years where she can't give a speech without hacking up a lung. And it goes on and on and on. CNN, oh, she stumbled a little. No, she's standing there and starts having a seizure. The handler gets over to hit her with the EpiPen. That's clear. Not, not soon enough. And then she goes into a full seizure and collapses. And that's exactly what people do with a seizure. Is they'll be standing there and have their balance for a minute. And there's all of a sudden, boom, they'll fall with a ton of bricks. Their head into the ground. And that's usually what ends up killing you. Because you get serious brain injuries, and Hillary is having more and more and more. This is legendary because the mainstream media completely hitched their wagon to this lie. The mainstream media did everything they could to prop this up, and now it is going to discredit them even more. It is unbelievable. They can't stand the fact that DrudgeReport.com and Infowars.com lead the narrative and that Trump who's a smart guy and has top generals advising him, tunes into what we're saying and concurs with the analysis. They can't stand that. Of course Trump knows about election fraud and is challenging it. Hillary stole the nomination. Of course he challenged it. So now you have to run in and, quote, take over the election to protect it from election fraud that doesn't exist. What's that do to our credibility? When we set the mark, it goes up. What happens to your credibility? It goes down. But I've got to tell you, there's not much further down you can go with a 6% trust rate. You're a joke. I bust my brain. I work 18 hours a day many days, really trying to know the truth. I don't just sit here and make stuff up, and you know it. You can't stand it. You people hate your jobs. I've talked to a lot of these so-called bigwig TV hosts and folks. They can't stand what they're doing. Most of them on the side go, we love what you're doing. Please don't be mean to us. Hopefully, once it all collapses, we can come work for you. I've sat here with major national anchors who basically, when you finally go out to dinner with them and you're having drinks with them, having a glass of wine, they basically say, God, Alex, where's all this going? What are we going to do? So much of what you say is true. I think you were a kook, but it's all happening. I'm not the kook. I'm reading globalist white papers that are public that are so nightmarish, I can't believe it either. I know this stuff sounds crazy. But it was very fitting when I'm talking about how they're going to drug the food and water supply in their own words to, to where we become asexual creatures that aren't male or female. And it's Rachel Maddow making fun of me when she is the new future human.
She's what I'm saying they're going to do from their own words, and she's it. And she doesn't even get it or understand it when she's looking at it with her own eyeballs. All of this is about ending us as humans, putting the AI goggles on our head. I'm going to reset and get into all the news, go through all the headlines, play these clips right now. A bunch of key Trump clips, so many guests coming up today. I want to bring Joe Biggs in here, too, because he's really been on top of this with the Secret Service information. And you notice, spot on. And it's not that I gave him the dangerous jobs. He wants them. It's like, I'm going to go up there with the communists, burn the flag and cover it. You, or do you want to do it? And I said, no, Biggs, you, you go get the glory. <laughs> and the same thing with this. I'm like, yeah, okay, Secret Service. He's like, I want it. I want it. I want it. I said, I said, buddy, I got plenty on my plate. You take it. Now, this is real dangerous. You want this hand grenade, because I'm I'm still standing right next to him with the hand grenade, but he's got the hand grenade in his hand. Or, or, or let's say he was like a like a kangaroo. He's got it in his little pouch. I'm standing right next to him. <laughs> but I don't think the audience really, really gets what we're doing here. This is not tiddlywinks we're playing. This is the real world, folks. Why they hate us so much. We know what we're doing. And the patriots and the government understand what's going on as well. This is a full gutting of the country. And I want to make it clear, too, because there's this talking point out there that Alex has gone from bashing the police to doing everything he can to defend them no matter what they do. I wanted to stop the globalists from federalizing the police. I wanted to stop the militarization so the globalists couldn't cause this clash of civilizations and divide and conquer. We've now gotten to the actual civil war part, and the police actually woke up to a great extent so now we're actually more and more opposing the new world order which is what we need to do and so this is a good thing to celebrate we've got problems in america and we can fix them together as americans later but we're not going to have george soros and the new world order come in here and cause a huge civil war we're going to wake people up we're going to fight the globalists we're going to expose them we're going to discredit them and they're going to physically move against us probably and that's when the Carpet is going to get pulled up out from under their tottering asses. Okay? You need to understand what's going on here. This isn't a game, ladies and gentlemen. We have history. We have will. We have God. We have our ancestors. We have common sense. We have survival instinct on our side. And people that don't choose a side and join the republic are fools. They want us infighting racially religiously according to region it's an obvious plan soros admits it's a plan they've given billions a hundred million two weeks ago from the ford foundation to blm alone it's on folks they mean business this is so simple all right let me continue uh, look i barely plugged last week and, and we're not bringing in the capital we need uh, I'll just be honest, I'm hiring new people, I'm expanding in the face of the globalists, it's my duty. I don't want to blow the small reserves we have, I need those, believe me. Uh, look at all this copyright crap, just trying to show you the video of her collapsing, that they thought they could shut down web wide, but everybody's spreading it. I need folks to go to InfoWarsStore.com and buy Hillary for prison shirts at cost for $9.95, that includes shipping. Now, there's a tab there. Or you can pay $19.95, so we make $10, which we certainly need. This shirt needs to be everywhere. It helps bring people together. It helps expose the globalists. It helps you realize the power of the people and to meet like-minded folks. It's so important you get a Molon Labe shirt or Hillary for Prison shirt or many of the other hundreds of great T-shirts we've got at InfoWarsStore.com. But separately in this world, with all this globalism going on, and all this destabilization, you need to be prepared. And we are only running this special until Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm probably going to end it Tuesday. We only do this once a year normally. I'm doing it every two, three, four months now because things are so serious. 30 to 40% off the super high quality, storable food powered by My Patriot Supply at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsSelect.com. The full spectrum of My Patriot food, private label by us, exact same food, just as fresh. But I can contractually, because of private labeling, go 30 to 40% off. In the contract, it says once a year, but we got them to change it. That's how I've been able to do this. So, again, uh, this is a major, major deal. No one can top this. 
And uh, the free market system is get you prepared, get you what you need, have it be such a good deal that even though we make much uh, less money on each sale, we sell a lot more. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarsselect.com. Everybody needs this. And there's a lot of other preparedness specials that are going to end Tuesday or Wednesday as well. Survival Shield X2, nascent iodine. We also have 20% off the vitamin mineral fusion, which is an absolute, again, liquid multivitamin nutrient system, with the amino acids, everything else you need for uptake. Totally essential. But bottom line, you could not be funding a more focused, dedicated, truthful, honorable organization. We are so committed. And that's evident. And history is repeating itself that if you're focused, truthful, steadfast, dedicated, humble, but bold at the same time, that if you take action against evil over time, you will overcome it. So I need everybody to pray for us, spread the word, spread the links, spread the uh, podcast, spread the stories, the videos, because you are the InfoWar. And I need you to go to InfoWarStore.com and I need you to buy the products. I need you to be prepared, whether it's a shortwave radio or the film Amerigeddon. Whatever you do, support the broadcast today. And I know you have been supporting us, especially in these hard economic times. So I want to thank you. Please support our local affiliates. Become a sponsor. Support the sponsors. Let them know why you're supporting. Send the station 20 bucks. Paint the station numbers on the side of your barn or the back of your car. Every little bit helps. We are in an information war. History's happening, and we're so close to turning the tide. But I'm here to tell you. You can smell a false flag in the wind, an assassination attempt on Hillary, a successful one perhaps, carried out by the globalists to make her look like a victim and put the next Democrat in. They hope she'd just slide in there and then, you know, die a few years, you know, a few years into office or they'd be able to stabilize her. They're so secretive, we're not sure, but it's, she's clearly deteriorating quickly. Uh, so I look for false flags. I would look for anything. They're talking about suspending the election in major newspapers. They're meeting right now in D.C. and discussing what they're going to do. If it goes to the Electoral College, it will probably be Donald Trump that's put in. But we're not sure at this point because there's so many Republicans that may actually flip-flop and go for Hillary. So if you look at it that way, it'd probably be Hillary or whoever else it is. And they're talking about putting Biden in or even Bernie Sanders over Kane. This is a nightmare scenario. This Republic has never been in greater peril. So we can sit here and go, oh, look, we're proven right. Hillary's in big trouble. Hillary's sick. Ha, ah, look, boy, the independent media has been proven right again. They're not going to bring all this in and leave us alone. They're taking the gloves off, folks. That means on your bank accounts. I don't just mean if you fight the New World Order. I mean everybody. Bail-ins, economic depression, total control. They want to bring this country to its knees and start a race war as the overall cover screen for this garbage. And we have got to have cooler minds prevail. We've got to stand up, like Martin Luther King said, and, 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 and say no to all this racial division. We have to come together against the New World Order. And if you're afraid, let me explain something. You ought to be afraid of not taking action. Now, let's get into what's currently happening. A candidate's death could delay or eliminate the presidential election. U.S. News and World Report, we covered this back on the 30th day of August, just 13, 14 days ago. The presidential election could be delayed or scrapped altogether if conspiracy theories became predictive. Oh, if conspiracy, having an opinion which comes true is now a bad thing. But... Oh, but now it's almost seen as oracle level, you see. And when they don't, they don't, they don't mean some kook out there making up purple aliens in his basement. They mean us, folks. And a candidate dies or drops out before November 8th. The perhaps equally startling alternative is there's enough time, small groups of people handpicked a replacement pursuant to obscure party rules. And now the Republican Party gets its run again at getting rid of Trump. But he'll stand up and fight and have the people on his side. They won't get away with it like they did with Sanders. The scenarios have been seriously considered by a few outside of the legal community and likely are too morbid for polite discussion. See, too morbid to live in the real world, even though political subterfuge and this garbage is part of world history. And those of us that are informed, we get called conspiracy theorists because we know about the Electoral College and party rules. We're bad, though. But even discussing this is too morbid are too morbid for polite discussion 
in politically mixed company. Oh, yeah, you're not supposed to talk to each other. See, they've all trained us. But prominent law professors have pondered the effects and possible ways to address a late-day vacancy. There's nothing in the Constitution which requires a popular election for the electors serving in the Electoral College. Oh, oh, see, they're trying that party rule thing they made up. Said John Nagel, a law professor at the University of Notre Dame, meaning the body that officially elects presidents could convene. It's only there in case of emergency of a death. But see, now they're saying, oh, just ignore it. And it goes on to say, could convene without the general public voting. Well, maybe permanently then just not have elections like the Communist Politburo uh, or the Central Committee, see? This is a, oh, we just don't have voting anymore. We told you about that during the primaries, you understand? Now turn your guns in, we're, we're loving. The conspiracy theorists said we were thinking about doing this, now we admit we are. That's why they're discredited, because when you're right, you're discredited. When you predict the 2007 and 8 housing crash, two years before it happens, on video, with experts, it's in the film Endgame, but the interview was released in 2006, you're a kook, see, when you're dead on with the sources and risk your life. When you get arrested in Canada covering it, when you're bold, you're bad. When you read off a teleprompter, you're good. You're a hero. It's up to each state legislator to decide how they want to choose the state's electors. Nagel says, and that'll be the Republican establishment, it may be a situation in which the fact that we have an electoral college rather than direct voting for presidential candidates may prove to be helpful. Ah. But major parties do have rules for presidential ticket replacements. However, and Congress has the power to change the election date under Article 2 of the Constitution. Yeah, it's Congress. Because the founders believe the biggest body of people would have checks on each other. So the presidency is supposed to be the weakest, then the courts, and then all you know above that is the Constitution of uh, the Congress. Continuing, which allows federal lawmakers to set dates for the selection of presidential electors and when those electors will vote. So we'll read more of this when we come back. Now, this is what I told you about two weeks ago. Now we have it all broken down with the Democrats openly saying they're scheming in D.C. right now to decide who they're going to appoint as your next president. Stay with us. Joe Biggs and Leanne McAdoo are coming in for 20 minutes at the start of the next hour. In fact, let's just get them in there in five minutes. Let's bring them in for the first segment as well. And we're going to play clips. Uh, Dew is putting together a master compilation that I need to give a really powerful title to that just shows her the times she's fallen down, the times that she's having just some of the hacking attacks. There's been hundreds of them. Um, the fact that she fell down yesterday and did not, quote, stumble. Uh, the fact that uh, it's on record uh, that, you know, she's trying to get Parkinson's medication. The fact that she was in the hospital for a year uh, and that the media is basically covering all of this up. Because if you look at it, it's clear. And now the Associated Press, the Washington Post, they've all turned against her as of just the last few hours. The stories are up on Infowars.com. Hillary's health, no longer conspiracy theory, says Associated Press. Well, maybe they'll announce that Australia was just discovered. It doesn't matter who really discovered Botany Bay. It doesn't matter that it was an English uh, sailor. It, let's just say Associated Press just discovered the planet Earth. The AP has a oh, dun, 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 bum, 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 bum. Ladies and gentlemen, the Associated Press that secretly decides the elections, that's now been federalized, that decided that Bernie lost California when he didn't. The AP, of course, because the meeting's been ongoing all this morning in D.C., and the word's going back. Okay, we can't cover it up anymore. What are we going to do? We need to tell Hillary to step down. So now they're spinning. How do we make it look like a victim? How do we make it look like a tax made her be sick? How do we make it? How do we spin this? Who, who do we put in? Who, you know, who's best? How do we scam it at the state level? And with the Electoral College, what do we do? Because Trump's way ahead in all these internal polls. And even in the mainstream cheating polls, he's now five, ten points ahead. What do we do? What do we do? And we're going to find out now. But the big signal, the Associated Press, has come out. Hillary's health, no longer conspiracy theory, says Associated Press. You know, you don't exist when you're born until the AP walks into your mommy and your daddy. And they say, what do you want to name your boy? Alexander Emmerich Jones. 
seven pounds, six ounces, born in Dallas, Texas. And they said, we're sorry he doesn't exist. And then you just whoosh, turn into smoke because AP is God. AP is history's actor, like Karl Rove told the New York Times and Washington Post. He said, I don't care what you report. Of course, there's no WMDs. I lie. I control reality. You do whatever I say. <laughs> In fact, can we come into the next segment with the 2001 Space Odyssey? Thank you. Uh, Hillary's health, no longer conspiracy theory, says the Associated Press. Well, gee golly whiz bang. Even the pro-Hillary media now questions Hillary's health. But they say, why did she lie to us when she had a pneumonia? I never got to the clips. I'll play them next hour from MSNBC and others where they're just like, she's the healthier than most of the people on the press team. She's got so much energy. Gee golly, she's a, like a Clydesdale horse. That lady's amazing. I don't know how she does it. Why, she's going to be the new UFC woman's champion, maybe even the men's champion. Yeah, I mean, she is amazing. And I tell you, Donald Trump is the one he's got. He's covered something up. I have a clip, actually, where Mitchell actually says that. She says, the other stuff was sarcasm. But, you know, Trump is covering something up, okay? Hillary is the picture of health. But then meanwhile, behind this innocent-looking bookstore, could Clinton be suspended if Hillary drops out? Electoral College could choose the next president. Of the top Democrats push the presidential election to be suspended if Hillary Clinton drops out due to her ill health, they are already doing it. As InfoWars reported a month ago, Secret Service sources told us that directly Hillary's campaign will be forced into making a big announcement soon regarding her medical condition. We really ought to get the clips, too, when Biggs came on and we broke all this down a month ago. And there's so much more. We haven't even scratched the tip of the iceberg. Tell everybody you know, tune in right now. This is world-changing news. This is InfoWar. We've got to get out ahead of this. We have, by the way. We're kicking their ass. Praise God. Today. And pass the emanation. Joe Biggs. Leanne McAdoo. <laughs> yes, I've been containing a Cheshire cat grin all day long. My dad, we were uh, out at the lake with the kids when this news came in. Liam was texting me, so was Biggs. I went and saw the video, and I went, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was just like, just literally just in ecstasy. <laughs> and my dad said, that is horrible, celebrating over that sick woman, even though I hate her too. And I went, no, this is a devastating victory against the enemy and more of the avalanche of them being discredited. And the hand of God is upon this. Yes. And it's only going to get better the more good people take action. That's why evil always fears us and does everything they can to try to contain us throughout history and suppress us because they're scared of us. Look at these hunchback demons. They're nothing. <laughs> Sweep them aside once we whip people up. It's not like we're offering some utopia like they do, but we're offering good old common sense prosperity. Can people handle it? Leanne McAdoo, uh, Joe Biggs, uh, Joe, Secret Service, we told everybody a month ago uh, exactly what's happening. It's all come out exactly as we said. Leanne, where is this going? Well, I got to say, at first, I, like you, I was overcome with ex excitement and joy when I first saw it because, you know, it was almost like she was overcome with all the energy of those those spirits of the people there at the moment. She, she the works world. with Al-Qaeda and ISIS. And, and was, she couldn't, yeah, it was like. She struck down. Yeah, it's it like karma. Send back your send back the co campaign contributions from Saudi Arabia now that we have the 28 pages. You know, she was like overcome. It was like the spirits were there. So I was really rejoicing, but then I kind of felt sorry for her after I saw her. Just, she was really weak and pathetic. Well, it shows how pathetic yeah. evil is. I don't think I ever felt sorry once yesterday. <laughs> yesterday brought an entire new meaning to Sunday Fun Day. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah! Oh, I'm sorry. It was Patriots football day. I'm going to be honest. It was like one long, you know what, yesterday. It, it was 9-11 anniversary. It was the anniversary of Benghazi. And Hillary Clinton collapsed so fast. And there's so many I things. I didn't think that of that. I see, it's epic. It's biblical. It's, it's, it's karma. Exactly. It is the ultimate thing. And the Patriots won. My buddy's with uh, Donald Trump right now in Baltimore. <laughs> And he's actually talking to Tom Brady about sick Hillary right now from what my buddy's telling me right now. So there's a, definitely a conversation going on about it. Yesterday was the most epic day ever. The I could not stop grinning. Won. I broke out the beer. I made some chicken wings. Got a pizza. Watch football. We're, so, we're I'm celebrating. There, I'm getting the crew chicken right now. I, I'm on. I was on my laptop all day looking into this stuff, you know, watching. All you know, that's it. I only commentators. got chicken for this crew. I want to send somebody else. Get chicken for the whole office. Fried chicken for everybody. We don't get the MSG chicken. We get the good, you know, organic. Lucy. <laughs> I don't know what we're getting it. I'm just joking. 
Uh, anyways, uh, very, very excited. But think celery. about this. That's yesterday, right, celery. <laughs> yesterday was an interesting day. The way the whole story progressed, uh, it started off as she had, like, heat exhaustion. It was 76 right. degrees outside. Right. So if she becomes president, who's going to be president when it gets hotter than 76 right. degrees you outside? Can't go anywhere where she's the ice queen. Hot. Then, then <laughs> the story switched to she's had pneumonia since Friday. Now I've had pneumonia before. Pneumonia is contagious. Mm -hmm. Now she's she's had, hugging the little girl. Yeah, she's yep. hugging this girl. Now this girl's probably going to get sick. Mm -hmm. And a Show kid that. like that can't fight pneumonia. What if this girl ends up dying? Well, because well, of but that? I mean, how staged is it? Right. That she, oh, the little girl walks out. No one can talk to me. The little girl runs like the over. Secret Service it's like Kim Jong Un propaganda in North Korea. Yeah. The Secret Service would never have allowed just some random little girl to run up. It was totally staged. Oh, and like the if Pope. she does have pneumonia, so this is before they came out. Which she oh, doesn't. She had pneumonia. Why'd she come out and say, oh, I'm perfectly fine. I'm feeling And look great. at those blue lens glasses. Those are the Zeiss Z1 blue lens. Those are anti-seizure glasses you can buy online to wear to stop. He's got a guy that walks behind her with a freaking needle. <laughs> That's I mean, and they're like, hey, conspiracy well, theorists. Like, Rachel Maddow last Thursday. Oh, she's falling down. Is she, Alex? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Well, and it's like, look at her entourage. The people she's traveling with. Her main guy is like also her handler slash doctor. We said there were people. And then it's her nurse. Admit it's creepy. Would you let your child get near her? No. It's the same thing with the Pope when that little kid got past everybody and got all the way up to him. Like, I mean, I mean later admit it was staged. All right, let's come back, Leanne, get into stuff because we're cutting over here, but it's just, we're excited. And then I want you to get into the Secret Service. We're proving right again. And what's the next shoe to drop? Because they're meeting in D.C., the Democrats are, to decide who to appoint president. Mm -hmm. So, hey, we're not out of the woods yet. Gosh. All right, listen, I'm not celebrating that Hillary Clinton collapsed and, and clearly has serious neurological disorders. I am celebrating, though, on the anniversary of Benghazi and her ordering the stand down and four great Americans dying and a lot of other innocent people and her arrogance saying, what difference does it make? On the 50th anniversary of 9-11, when Clinton is on record, even the Washington Post, protecting al-Qaeda and bin Laden before 9-11, and I've interviewed Colonel Schaefer, who said it was Clinton that gave the orders not to let them kill him the first time. Now, uh, it was the Pentagon the second time, the CIA, uh, that ordered him not to kill bin Laden as well in, in, in early uh, 2001. So you look at all the things she's done, how she is the founder of modern ISIL. ISIL. Uh, that's on record. And the fact that this happened to her on 9-11 is incredible because we know the Secret Service told us a month and a half ago in Cleveland that the next few weeks we get info. We got the info. Uh, they had to do it, again, by person, not digital. This is very... And they didn't really give us secret stuff. They said... We don't know what it is. She's collapsing more and more. Mm. She's falling down. It's epileptic. We think it's Parkinson's. We don't know how she can continue. That's why she's not out in public a lot. 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> it's getting really, really bad. But look at her vehicles, the lifts, all of it. Now we have mainstream photos of her with these lifts on the car. Mm -hmm. She's falling down just like they said. She's going into the seizure. Joe Biggs, Liam McAdoo. It was, it was interesting yesterday. You know, my phone was blowing up. People concerned. People pretty excited about the entire thing. My buddy... His name's Jordan. He goes, you know, I'm not a religious person. He's like, but when you, when you sit back and you look at the fact that this happened on the anniversary of 9-11, mm -hmm. Benghazi, she collapses right there, proving everything you guys have been saying for months now. He's like, I believe in God now. I mean, he, uh, when, when people start having these experiences and when you fight the new world order, it starts happening all the time. Right. And then you're like, whoa, this is crazy. I don't want to go on the wrong side of this. Well, and it's really interesting how they always kind of stage certain things on auspicious dates and then to have this happen on that auspicious date. So it, 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 I think it's kind of like a message to them. Like, you're not above the laws of this universe. Well, people were making you're fun of us for the longest it, time saying that, oh, there's no upgraded vehicles. She clearly rolls around in like this blacked out ambulance looking mm -hmm. thing. That has little stairs on it to help. With well, an ambulance out. following her. Yeah. Last week in the Ohio. Gurney, the the Gurney thing. They're, they're secret service guys with a stretcher following her into her events. I mean, she's clearly sick. We've been saying it since day one. Well, and you can also tell by just the way that the secret service, how they all kind of gathered around. They were all ready. They knew it was going to happen. And, Not like it was some random well, as, thing. As and there's the black guy that's always there with the EpiPen. Right. Right before that happened, there was a doctor that was following her, walking her as they were going to that van. And she had to leave. And they were doing like typical neurological tests where as she was walking, yeah, she was having yeah. her pulse checked and having yeah, they're holding squeeze, her arm. They're holding her arm. Squeeze the doctor's hands to try to do that. And then you have to look at the glasses she's wearing. Like I said, these are Zeiss Z1 blue lens glasses. They're anti seizure glasses. They admit they are. To wear. And what we got, the information we got from my Secret Service contact 
was in fact that she couldn't be around flashes because of that. This is a she was going to be out in public. This is a 9-11 memorial. There's tons of people out mm -hmm. flashing cameras, all that. Lots that's why questions. she had to wear those glasses. And that's why when she does speak to the press, it's her little press corps that follows her around on the airplane. It's they little small, small groups of these handpicked women. Yes. And, and they know if they challenge anything, if they question Hillary about her health, they will be kicked off and not allowed to follow. And they can't anymore. roll right. oranges at her. Uh, Leanne, you're the one that first brought up, <laughs> which everybody else is bringing up behind the scenes. This is spiritual. This is biblical. Right. That was my very first instinct when I saw that. I mean, obviously, we've been talking about Hillary's health, and that was just confirmation of it. But the very first thing that was my first tweet was like, you cannot escape the spirit realm. You just can't. And it's just auspicious that this happened. And that was what I felt like. She was just overcome. I just be, it's kind of a beautiful thing to see because I feel like it really is a message to these evil people who are think that they are going to get away with this madness and murder forever. You're not. Well, yeah, let me ask you this and then, Joe. We wrote about this when I suddenly saw AP, Reuters, U.S. News and World Report, USA Today. I mean, it was clearly two weeks ago a push to go, okay, maybe conspiracy theorists are right. Mm -hmm. What if one of the candidates dies, like Hillary? We're just going to have to appoint the president. Or, I mean, it, it's, I, it's crazy. We've written articles about it today. It, it, mainstream news admits the Democrats are meeting right now and deciding what, what type of scam they want to pull with the mainstream media to try to steal this from Trump because now he's ahead, even in their skewed polls. Mm-hmm. Well, it's very interesting. People are saying, well, what about, you know, Bernie Sanders now? So many people wanted him. But, I mean, they picked the wrong candidate. And it's like, she's so, how how dark must your heart be if you continue on and forge ahead with this presidency, knowing that you have some sort of illness that is going to stop you from being able to do your job? Like, how dark Power must hunger. Your heart be? I, I exactly. honestly think that she's so hungry to be, become the first female president in America She's willing to die trying. Mm -hmm. That's just how corrupt she is. How and, she and they're is. all going to go to jail if they don't. The only way for them to get out of it is to become president, they think. Right. I think she just wants to get there. I don't think she, I think she knows that she can do an entire full four years. They're going to try to bring someone in later. That's why they've got this walking cane, which is kind of funny because she's so ill. They had to bring in a cane to help her <laughs> out. You know, it's, it's so interesting. But she's not going to be able to last the entire time. They're going to bring someone else in eventually. And that's why this meeting's happened. Mm -hmm. So it, it's definitely unfolding. It's finally happening. My favorite headline on Drudge right now is Matt Drudge and the alt-right vindicated <laughs> after Hillary collapsed. I believe that was the entire uh, yeah. headline. Well, and, you know, we've been out here every day. People on the news, alt-right media people that use Twitter, uh, Periscope, all that, pointing out, watching all of her videos, finding the fact that we found the earbud in her ear. The fact that Let's be clear. It's the public that's the power. Yes. Right. Infowars and Drudge and, and others are just... The, Linking to it and... Well, absolutely. She tried. She and her entourage left the press pool that was with her at this event. Oh, we have some video of that, too, and photos. I mean, she's clearly in trouble there yeah. with them grabbing her by the arm. Right, exactly. Well, and she, she left the press behind, didn't tell them where Unexpectedly. She was. Told them a, stay there. Yes, it was someone there Ran on to the Chelsea's street. house, so there wouldn't be any witnesses at the hospital. Yeah, and, and we don't know. Did she make any other stops on the way? We don't know because she didn't allow the press to follow her go with her but it was a person on the street who was able to get this footage so it's like you you have nowhere to hide and then i think it's hilarious now that uh the msnbc uh, who's andrew mitchell coming out and saying you know well we've been trying to fact check all these conspiracy theories and you lied why don't you just tell us about the pneumonia and now that's that's the official story. It's pneumonia. Like, do your they fall back. Oh, we caught her in a lie. You have pneumonia. You don't cough for years with right. pneumonia. Exactly. You die if you have it for just a few months. The guy that owns the pharma companies, what's his name? Martin Martin Shkreli. Shkreli, yeah. Shkreli, he actually approached Hillary yesterday and asked her why she's stroller. so sick. Well, he I started following his Twitter account last night. He said there were red laser beams coming through, and he did a Periscope video. we got to find it later, where he thought that this was going to be his last time. He's like, he's like I, I think I poked a bear. And now I'm being like, wait a minute. He went home and they were shooting laser beams. He said there was a laser, red oh, laser coming through the window. He was standing outside of Chelsea's whoa, apartment. Yeah, yeah. Right? He went out yeah. there and that's when he confronted them about it. But when he went home, he oh. said there was a laser coming through the window. So he did a periscope video. He's scared. He even started wow. tweeting to Snowden like, can you help me, please? Can you help me? I mean, there's the Clintons are people you don't screw around with. I mean, I had, a, I had a one time four guys call me on the studio line. They said, we're going to you know, kill you for talking bad about the Clintons. I'm like, oh, yeah, screw you. I go outside. They're there. They start attacking me going, shut up about the Clintons. Right. Then two weeks later, they call me in. They go, quit talking about the Clintons to my boss on the radio. And I go, and he goes, yeah, you're fired if you don't. And they fired me. Wow. I mean, these people don't play games. Yeah, and that's the thing is like the whole establishment has been propping this woman up. They've got to get her in, even if she's only in there for a year, to go ahead and sign all those executive orders and get everything done for this globalist agenda. She's their gal.
You know, it's not just about her and she's so evil and she's going to be the first woman president. She is the establishment's candidate and they got to get her in. I totally agree with button. you. I, I want you guys to ride shotgun with me with, with Pastor Manning. I want to go ahead and skip this network break. Last one of the day uh, that we're going to skip and I want to get Manning on. But during the skipping of the break, I want to air a video that you guys just mentioned that's up on Infowars.com. I want to be very clear with viewers and listeners. This is an information war. History, if you study other nations, other empires, they go through this upheaval, this type of subterfuge happens. This is normal. Those of us that study normal history, that interview intelligence operatives, high-level spy chiefs, high-level generals, you know, the, the, uh, the former heads of major departments, I've interviewed them all. You get an understanding of how things really work. And the public are like babies that have no idea and are coming out of the cave in Plato's allegory and learning the truth. They want to sit there all day and say conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, when that's all they've got. There are crazy conspiracy theorists that say the world's flat and the Easter Bunny's real and Obamacare's free. That's the mainstream media lying to you. We don't say Santa Claus is real. We can look at someone who's seriously ill and was in the hospital for a year and looked like hell when she came out and now has clear problems. Right. But when you look at the things that like Mitchell said on MSNBC, she said, quote, Trump is worse than Hillary. Okay. That's what they're saying. He's saying he's worse about covering up his medical records. No. He says, I'll release my records when she does. He says when she releases all of her secret foundation documents that are totally secret in, in, in Canada and in Europe and places, right. I'll release my damn tax returns. Right. It's not fair where only he has to release stuff the law and, well, she, of, and she doesn't. Well, of course, she's going to keep her tax returns. She's been in the public eye in politics for a long time. She knows how to keep her tax returns clean, but it's her foundation that you need to see the tax returns for that. And they've already admitted they've had to it's go It's all washed. It's years. all fake. Yeah. It's totally criminal. Look right. at Glamour Magazine and Salon coming out and saying it's sexist to question Hillary Clinton's health. Mm -hmm. They're trying to set the tone, the narrative for these young millennials who are going to grow up and go, well, oh, my God, you can't ask about this person's health. That's, right. that's sexist. That's and that's by the way. No, that's not bad. You, If someone looks sick, you should bring it up. They need to get help. Rob Dew should be done with this in the next 10 minutes. He's got a compilation of a lot of her health crises, a lot of her health problems. I think we forgot to put the one in there where she falls going up the airplane. There's a couple mm -hmm. of those, but there are so many of these. We're going to be playing that coming up in about 15 minutes when Pastor Manning is with us. He's in New York. I want to get his take, what folks are saying on the ground, get his perspective. But ride shotgun with me, guys, uh, for the rest of the hour. Infowars.com is the tip of the spear in the fight. We are running a special until Wednesday up to 40% off, 30 to 40% off on Infowars. High quality, storable foods powered by My Patriot Supply. 20% off Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. 20% off the vitamin, mineral, uh, amino acid, fruit punch. Great way to get your kids to get all the vitamins and minerals they need. Absolutely key. We've got the new BioTrue Selenium in that's such a game changer. Uh, we've got uh, at cost Hillary for Prison shirts with shipping included, $9.95 or pay $19.95. You have that option. So we actually make some money to fund this operation. But whatever you do, Pray for us, ladies and gentlemen. We need your support. InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. InfoWarsLife.com is the supplements. Or call 888-253-3139. Joe Biggs? I had uh, Owen Schroyer. He was over at my apartment yesterday. And we were we had the Sunday feed up. And we were watching. And I'm telling you, that Mr. Maddow special is <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Owen, Owen's like, you know what? I'm about to go online right now and buy that to contribute to the cause. He's like, this is... Well, we need the funding. We need the prayers more than anything. Because let me tell you, this is dangerous. Now, I talk about David versus Goliath. He called for it a few years ago. And Noah thought it would happen to get uh, Sharpton off of MSNBC. It happened one month after he started it. Pastor Manning will be joining us after this quick clip I'm going to play of MSNBC in conniption fits trying to cover up yesterday that Hillary had a seizure and collapsed. Now we have it from the Secret Service. She has seizures mm -hmm. and collapses. I mean, we told you, we told you about the lifts, we told you about the gurneys. A month all, ago. All out in the news. I mean, we were there in Cleveland. This is with and the Secret Service like, we're gonna give you information. And you're like, what the hell, guys in suits? They said, we'll get it to you in a couple of weeks. It came to us. And then they right. said there's going to be a big... Uh... Big shake-up, big announcement. Mm -hmm. Because they said they can't go on too much longer, which makes me think it may be planned. Who are they going to bring in? Because, yeah. you know, we're kind of excited here seeing this evil one fall. We'll have the pastor tell us, I mean, is this biblical? Is this providence on the day of 9-11, Benghazi and 9-11, that this person behind al-Qaeda and ISIS, protecting him in the 90s, protecting him now, working with Saudi Arabia, has now been stricken? I don't celebrate her being hurt individually, but to see evil fall like Herod...
Mm -hmm. is, 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 like you said, you have friends who don't believe in God, now they do. Yes. You're seeing it happen, the prayers are happening. But before we go there, here is a clip of the conniption fits uh, in the media, because now they're backing off admitting there were lies. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. The sale didn't work because they're getting ready to dump Hillary, folks. Let's go to this clip and then to Pastor Manning. Um, of course, the big story today has been the fact that Secretary Clinton left rather unceremoniously, having become overheated. We should say the weather has been horrific, very hot, extremely humid temperatures. She was adorned in a, a long sleeved coat, uh, a, a pantsuit. And so what we will see here now is her getting into the car. She was a little bit unstable there. She was a, a little bit wobbly. That's, I think, an appropriate word to use. You could see right there. Again, she had become overheated. I couldn't even wear what I'm wearing now to be appropriately dressed to anchor a broadcast. I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt when I came in early this morning. It was that horrible, that weather. She has an unbelievably challenging taxing schedule that would be so physically for anybody, right? Let alone somebody, um, you know, who's who's her age. And frankly, standing for a long period of time, there is, you know, something that a fainting reflex that's called vasovagal syn syncope, which mm -hmm. is not uncommon. Sure. With that excessive heat, if she didn't eat enough that morning or well, drink enough yeah. that morning, it could happen to anybody. Yeah. It's eating. I mean, I know there are plenty of days that I will drink coffee yes. and a fair amount of it, I might have, right. <laughs> in the early mornings to get going. And then if you don't eat properly, that can set you off Absolutely. just right there. Kids have been spinning up theories that she's not, in fact, in good health. It is a rare occurrence that you and I discuss fashion when we're talking about politics. But I'm looking at what you are wearing. You've got short sleeves on. I can tell it's a light material. That is in direct yeah. contrast to what it appears Secretary Clinton was wearing. That blouse might even be a long sleeve blouse. I mean, put into perspective this weather out there. And if that's what she's wearing... I mean, that's just horribly uncomfortable. That's a good point. And, you know, it, it was the start of the day, the sun beating down. So, and you talk to other folks who were there at the 9-11 memorial. They also say that it was pretty hot there as well. She's in a dark suit, you know, long right. sleeved. It's not the kind of thing that you want to be wearing any inappropriate attire. So absolutely appropriate for the event. Perhaps not so much, though, to combat the weather and the heat. The secretary is wearing a not only long sleeved suit jacket, but it is dark color. Color. Of course, there are many of us who deal with the humidity of New York and, and up and down the East Coast and throughout the South. And you know that lighter colors, wearing lighter colors helps, uh, breathable yep. cotton, that sort of thing. And she was wearing a long jacket. We don't know the kind of material it was. And I'm certain not wanting to disrupt really the solemnity of the uh, right, ceremonies that's enough. downtown. There. I can't hear any more of this. It goes on and on. And, and, and we have a short clip and we're going to Pastor Manning of Andrea Mitchell. Uh, coming out and basically saying Trump is worse about not releasing medical information than Hillary is. So this is a total deception. She supposedly has pneumonia for years, I guess. It yeah. comes up and hugs this little girl uh, when it's contagious. I mean, any way you slice it, it's pure bull. Uh, here is the Andrea Mitchell clip. After telling us that the cough in Cleveland on Labor Day was just seasonal allergies, which is what she thought, but after she had an exam on Friday morning, uh, they had an affirmative obligation to tell us about the diagnosis of pneumonia and then the secrecy yesterday and for an hour and a half the press corps uh, the protective press pool the pool of reporters which is supposed to be with her just for this kind of emergency they are kept back at the ceremonies they don't know that she is they're not told that she's gone to Chelsea's apartment right. then they're brought there so that we can see her coming out looking very spry you know right. hugging the little girl and then eight hours after this first happened they finally tell us about mm. the diagnosis yeah, of pneumonia that was that occurred on Friday. I'm sorry. There is an obligation, not written, not in law, but there's an obligation. And Donald Trump is even worse than she is in terms of telling us anything about his medical history. So, yeah. you know, we've got a lot of problems. Oh, with that's enough. I, I want to give Pastor Man the floor now, but talk about a witch always using children. Mm -hmm. The Pope, you know, does this too. This is so sick, so staged. So evil. Pastor Manning, you're a pastor. You've talked about this great evil we're facing, this Jezebel spirit. We've got a long segment coming up, but this short one, everybody I talk to is on fire. Even people that Biggs knows that haven't been Christians from the military and stuff are saying, I believe in God now that this happened on this anniversary. What is really happening here? You're up there in New York right now. <laughs> well, it's interesting to find out people are getting religion over the witch uh, Hillary Clinton Jezebel. And, and uh, Alex, let me uh, give you uh, a shout out for using, uh, referencing the allegory of the cage by Plato. 
something I haven't heard anybody reference other than myself since leaving college. But listen, I think that we need to understand something that we are watching a setup. Uh, I, I don't think the powers that be want to see an election take place. And um, we are watching perhaps the beginning stages of it, or at least the culmination of the stages that began some time ago in Hillary uh, perhaps not being able to meet the election requirements in terms of what will happen in November. Uh, I think we also need, I believe she's sick. In fact, I know that the woman is sick, that she's, she's just mentally uh, incapable and she's physically incapable as well. But I, I think that, in fact, I'm confident that the Trump campaign and, and, and also Hillary's uh, inner circle and her internal polling is demonstrating unequivocally that Trump has won the election where it held last week. And her statement about deplorables last week was as, I think, outrageous as her uh, sickness this past was yesterday at the 9-11 event. And what Hillary has realized and come to understand her polling people are telling her that Trump has won the election. And even though there are some states, according to CNN, ROC, Paul Rasmussen, Quinnipiac, and perhaps some others are stating that Trump does not have some of the battleground states to take him to victory. But I think her polls are telling her that he does. And we may see a, a, an attempt now with this sickness either to stave off the election or we may see an attempt to try to bring sympathetic votes her way. You'll remember when Obama was whipping her behind up there in New Hampshire back in 2008, she sat down in that diner or restaurant or whatever it was and began to weep like a little baby. And she was able to come back from Obama beating her in Iowa. So I, I think the ultimate that we can look at, there are two things that we can be certain about. She's Number playing one, up for sympathy, and we know the Democrats are meeting right now in D.C. to figure out how to run a scam. Yeah, and 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 then the other thing is, is will we see an election? I mean, Alex, you've written about in your last statement you made about the fact this could be a way to pause the election that we don't have a candidate uh, to run. Uh, we have a candidate who's comatose, so we, you know, I, I think you made a statement, and several of your people, your guests, have also referenced that. Ultimately, I think this is what we're looking at. I don't deny that the woman is sick. But I think the sickness can be used by the powers that Oh, be. I agree. They won't let a good crisis go to waste. I mean, they're going to pivot no matter how things change. They're going to go back and forth. When we come back, Pastor Manning of Atla.org, a great church. They're serving the community in Harlem, A-T-L-A-H.org, Pastor James David Manning. When we come back, we'll talk about those different scenarios with our panel here. And I want to play the clips that you mentioned, the deplorables. Uh, we'll get uh, Donald Trump's latest response to that and a lot more. And we have a compilation video of her, all of her different health problems straight ahead. But uh, this is an incredible time to be alive. And I agree with Manning. Uh, it's good to see this, you know, the truth come out. But at the same time, they're going to strike back. They're going to pivot. They're going to make a move. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones with Leanne McAdoo and, of course, Joe Biggs. Well, Hillary collapsed in New York City. We're about to play a clip of Donald Trump talking about the deplorables, how half of Trump supporters are evil, bad people, bitter clingers. But I agree with Manning. They're going to try to make a move on this. Hillary is really sick, but it discredits the mainstream media like never before. That's why, overall, this is a big, big victory. Leanne McAdoo, Joe Biggs in the studio with us. Popping any time. I'm going back to Manning to finish up his comment here. But first, here's Donald Trump on Hillary's statement about the deplorables that's hurting her so bad in the polls. Personally, when I heard it, I thought that it was not something that was within the realm of possible that she would have said it. And I said to my people, I don't believe she said it. I think you have to check it because there's no way that she said this. And she actually did. And she even really doubled up because it was said with such anger and such unbelievable anger. And I think this is the biggest mistake of the political season. Sure. Remember this, you're gonna be president. You're president of all the people. You're not president of 50% or 75%. You're president of all the people. You're president of everybody. Mm. Pastor Manning, overall, yeah. I, mean, I mean, do you agree it is a discrediting moment for the mainstream media? I, but I, I, I agree with Trump completely on this. It's perhaps the worst statement throughout this campaign season. And it was not only just an art, an artful, it was a, it was a deplorable statement. It was, and I think, Alex, it was issued in panic. I think 
Uh, as I stated earlier, the internal polling is demonstrating that she has lost, and I think the powers that be understand that. And it was a statement made in panic. I think she is a little bit more governed in that, uh, a little bit more circumspect, rather than making a statement such as that. So she threw everything she possibly had. But the other question, Alex, is that, and you know, trying to put the, together the pieces, I think we all have been able to demonstrate that she is sick uh, and that they're trying to hide it. But the other thing is, is that, you know, it, it did, was she pulled down? Okay, let's say she made a statement um, realizing that the possibility of, uh, is very strong that she has lost the election and she makes this deplorable statement, which was awful to call Americans as she did. It's one thing to go out to an individual group. Uh, and, and so the powers that be, the New World Order, the globalists, the others said, let's take her off. Let's take her down. It's time for her to get off the stage and let's try to get somebody else or try to stave off or stall the election. So we can't be sure whether or not the, the, the fact that she is sick, that that sickness was used or whether she was just totally complete. Sure, let me ask you this question. I want you guys to chime in um, with your views. Everything's getting so crazy. Everything they do falls apart. Mm -hmm. And we see it with foreign leaders in other countries. It seems like the world is melting down and everything the New World Order does is disintegrating. Uh, but still, they just have the power and move forward. What would you call that phenomenon, Pastor Manning? Uh, the fact that they, they have the powers, but there is a spiritual, listen, America is praying, whether they are, whether they are, they're the, we are saints or not is a matter of question. But spiritually, America is looking at, you know, I said uh, today on the Manning Report, uh, uh, Alex, that what Donald Trump does is that he makes America feel young again. Now, I know his slogan is to make America great again. Okay, that's fine. But really, when you listen to him, it makes us feel young again. It makes us feel like we want to pick up our guns and go the wild, wild west uh, <laughs> in a positive way. We want to start another revolution. I mean, he really makes us feel like let's get our guns and go to town. Uh, I, I made the statement earlier today that America, Trump makes America in a positive way feel like we're on Viagra. Well, Trump's told me, he said, my mission is to raise America's spirit. I don't want to have a meeting yeah, on a field day, but Trump told me that on the phone. He goes... I said, the spirit of, of what I felt in that RNC was incredible. He goes, well, that's what I want to do is raise America's spirit and give us confidence again. And he's doing it. And he's got the time to do it right now. Look at this. 36 hours after or before Hillary made that deplorable statement, that's when Obama came back from Asia and he had been bashing America mm -hmm. on this entire oh, tour. Crazy. It was nothing but one day after another yeah. after another. Don't forget Obama was called an SOB in, in Asia as well. Yes. You know, I mean, they don't forget that the Philippine Duterte called him that. And they walked it back. But yeah, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go right ahead. No, no. I mean, you, I mean, your take on what's happening here, then. But but that's what I'm saying is the fact that we've got Obama, we've got Hillary attacking the American people. Trump is the one positive person that's really lifting it up. The fact that you've got so many people right now that have awakened from this state of like comatose where mm -hmm. they, right. you know, yeah. patriotism has died, it seems like, in so many aspects of america and this guy's coming in and he's he's igniting that again he's getting the people emotional and proud to be an american right. and proud you know, to go out and this, talk about that right all this quiet diplomacy and you know the and, and, and the uplifting of islam and yeah we, we as americans we're, we're tired of being pushed around by by muslims we're tired of being pushed around by mexicans we're tired of giving away the company store to nations like china and india and giving away all kinds of nuclear deals to iran and and saying it's, it's diplomacy it is the best way forward we are vigorous and aggressive people that's not in the spirit of america and what trump is saying we don't have to do this to hell with all that we are going to stand our ground. If you don't like it, we'll kick your butt. We'll, and, and people say, yay, mm -hmm. oh, that's what I want to do. I want to kick some butt again. I want to be, I want to be American. That, that's what's happening. And, and there's no way what, what Hillary is presenting can overcome that. So what are they going to do? I, you know, how are they going to stop Trump? Trust me now. I think the other thing needs to be clear. And Alex, you know, I've said from the very beginning, I just don't see Obama leaving office. Not now. I mean, I, 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 will he? It's a possibility, yeah. Well, they're even talking about it in mainstream news, putting the election off six months a year, and I guess Obama yeah. does stay. Right. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, well, I always, everybody's always said that. I didn't believe it. We're actually having news talking yeah. about that now, Leanne. Uncharted territory with this. And, and, just going back to what Pastor Manning was saying, I mean, look at what the president has done to this country. 
And it's not working because he's going to other nations and they're totally disrespecting him. They don't respect him for throwing away America, selling America out to the highest bidder. They don't respect him. And so I think it's true. Trump is coming in and they're certainly not going to respect Hillary Clinton. That's a oh, great question, not. Pastor Manning. I want to get both your take on this. Why do you think people are disrespecting Obama so much when he grovels to him? Because he's groveling, Pastor Manning? Yeah. Yeah, because he's shown, I mean, he, he drew a red line in the sand with Bashar Assad in Syria, right? And and Bashar crossed it before he could finish the, the mark itself. Um, he, I think people are, are looking and anybody with half a brain can see that Obama has sold out the American ideal. Mm -hmm. He has sold out the American people. And worst of all, he's trampled on black people. I mean, mm -hmm. in the worst possible way. So people are looking at this. And realizing that what he has done to America is said, listen, this man is nobody. He, he, and and we're, so we can say what we want to say about him. He hates and America and no world leaders out there respect him. Look, no, he, he, went over to the, he went over to the UK and they? he's trying to tell him how to vote for Brexit. And right. that bit him right in the butt because no one out there has respect for him. If you hate your own country, how could any other country have any kind of respect in what you have to say? As far as they're concerned, you're weak and they don't want you to be there. Right. Pastor Manning. They, yeah, I, I mean, I tried to count it up, but I know you met with Trump over a year ago. I know just in New York, he he, he met yeah. with a whole bunch of different black churches and black uh, preacher groups. And I saw him at prayer breakfasts and all, I mean, just it seemed like 20, 30 times. ABC News said a few weeks ago, well, it's the first time he's been to a black church in Detroit because, you know, he's uncomfortable and all this stuff. And I, and I went and looked it up and it seemed like he'd been there 10 times more than Hillary what do you say to that, their attempt to say he hasn't reached out to the black community when Obama doesn't say a word about that? And it seems like Trump's really been reaching out. What's the truth? I, I think that Trump's state statement uh, during the shortly the after the convention, I get my timelines mixed up here. Uh, what do you have to lose? Um, you got 58 percent unemployment of your youth. You've got failing schools. You've got poverty. What do you have to lose was an accurate statement, quite frankly. I was praying that he would not walk it back. The media jumped all over him. Anything you say about African-American people, I mean, you, you, they jump all over you. Uh, but he was absolutely right. And he should go back to that statement. What do you have to lose? And that statement confronts the fact that the, every city and every parcel of American government and lifestyle that is run by the Democrats and primarily where black people are in charge is failing, Alex. It, I live here in Harlem, I got to tell you, it is horrible. It's worse now than before Dr. King in the civil rights movement. More men in prison, fewer fathers. 90% of the homes in the black community, Alex, don't have fathers in them. Mm -hmm. This is, this is a, a, a horrible. What do you make of Kaepernick and George Soros and then these football teams taking a knee during 9-11? Regardless what you think about 9-11, the firefighters and police and those that died don't deserve to be pissed on. I mean, what what, what is all that? Well, you know, somebody should kick a Kaepernick's butt. I don't know what's it when he's sitting there. <laughs> I, I think they should should have got a good place kicker that knows how to put, put a real good kick. <laughs> and when he sits down, kick him right in the split. That's what I think <laughs> ought to happen to him now. Come arrest me for that. Somebody come arrest me for saying that. But that's what I think. You ask me what I think, I'll tell you what I think. What do you want me to do? Think about it, though. Think think about all the enemies we have right now that are looking at America, watching the news, Seeing America, the, the patriotism kind of collapsing, mm -hmm. the fact that you have all these people who are taking a knee or sitting down. We've had we have schools that are banning the Pledge of Allegiance, praying the fact that you can get, you know, arrested for having an American flag on your property. The fact that right. you can be told that you're being uh, anti-immigration because at a, a high school football game, you're waving an American flag, hey, Alex, and that could be... Well, look, it's globalism, hey, Alex, and it's not that America's perfect. It's that the globalists are blaming us for what they've done. Go ahead. Alex, listen, uh, today, yesterday was 9-11, right? Everybody down at, uh, you know, World Trade Center, and, they, and, and a great ceremony, and, they, and everything. And, of course, 9-11 is another story. But guess what's happening in New York City today, uh, the day after 9-11? All public schools in New York City are closed. 3.4 million children that go to school in New York cannot go to school because it's a Muslim holiday. The mayor of the city of New York City Council, state government, they have orchestrated the day after 9-11. You probably think I'm making this up. I swear it's the absolute truth. The day after 9-11, 9-12 is now a holiday called the El Ad Haddad spiritual holiday for Muslims. Banks are closed, businesses are closed, parents can't take their children to school, the food lunch, pro school lunch programs are closed down. 
businesses are losing money because we've now established a Muslim holiday 15 days, 15 years after. What is the plan making the West? And, and, and Leon, I want your view, and we'll get Pastor Manning's, on making us adopt the most radical forms of Islam. Well, what's the plan for making us do it? I, 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 the, the thing of it is, is that the is Saudi Arabia has a lot of influence over our nation. They have a lot of influence over the well New World Order. They have a lot of influence presently over Obama, and they want to spread Islam as far as they possibly can. And if they can then be, if they can co-opt this nation, they can break the spirit of this nation. They can take over financially as well. So it's simply a matter of ruling the kingdom of planet Earth. That's what it is. They want to rule planet Earth, and America is a major obstacle. And I got to tell you that what Trump has done in stirring up the people who want to, you know, make, make America young again is a threat. And we could see some really very serious activities now happening. Uh, you said they want America, despite all its problems, the threat to the globalists, to go to sleep yeah. and never wake up. Right. Yeah. And that's why I thought it was really interesting that they were trying to, uh, Bill Clinton was coming out saying that the Make America Great Again slogan is racist and, and really going to the black community saying, oh, well, he wants to take it back 50 years. And then you, you kind of go back and look at where the black community was. I mean, their families were together. They were on the I rise, want to go back rising middle years. class. Take me back. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I mean, go ahead, Pastor Manning. No, I want to go back 50 years. The families were together with strong schools. There were fewer than 100,000 men in jail, where that, uh, in prison, where there's now more than 1.2 million. Uh, the communities were flourishing mm -hmm. with jobs, uh, with decency with honor mm -hmm. to Alex, you know, you got you got to live in Harlem, a South Central Austin. Listen, uh, listen, listen, does anybody need anything better than Chicago? You've got nearly 5,000 people that have been killed in Chicago, black men killing each other since Obama's presidency. I mean, think about how horrific that is that that's going on. Nobody wants to live like that, right. but that's what so we could go back to a time where we weren't that that crazy. Sure. Well, here's the bottom line. Back. I want to ask you all each, because I want to have this roundtable today, uh, starting with Biggs and then Leanne and then Pastor Manning. What do you think they're cooking up in these secret DNC meetings they admit in Politico are going on right now to decide of whether Hillary should step down? I don't know. Like I said, I, I know that she's determined to do what she can. She's going to fight through this illness to try to get that, reach that historic moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I, in my opinion, I know she knows she can't last four years. The question is, is who are they going to usher in after that to take over? And that's why my concern has been since day one, who is this Kane guy and what is it that they want with him? And then if they don't go with him, what other kind of people are they going to choose to bring in? Mm -hmm. Well, and I just want to point out too, how uh, the dehydration and overheating was the same excuse that was given in 2012, when Hillary Clinton first fainted and got her concussion, they said she fainted because she was dehydrated and overheated. So obviously, this is an ongoing medical condition that she she has epilepsy. Classes. Yeah, I mean, it's not just this pneumonia that all of a sudden her staff has been having for several months, which the 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 political uh, the press pool has never heard of prior to this. Well, you catch pneumonia when you already have a weakened immune system. Exactly. Like when I had the flu, I got pneumonia when I had the flu. You don't just go out and get but it. But I'm telling you, they're making she's got a new, She's got a number of things wrong with her. Do I believe that she could have pneumonia? Yeah, it's a possibility. But that's caused, that's that's due to the fact that she has been sick for a long period of time. Her immune system. She's clearly weak. having uh, seizures. Yes. I mean, you she can loses. see her have them and then fall out. Listen, she loses but, but Alex, control of her muscles. Alex, listen, if, if Hillary has whitewashed, bleach bit 15,000 emails and God only knows how many others, that we will never know the content of or how they were served. We have to ultimately begin to ask the question, how much information has been bleached bit about that Muslim Barack Hussein Obama? And whoever goes into the presidency will have the power even to, to preserve and protect the, 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 the integrity of the, the criminality of Obama's illegal election or will have the ability to open it up and make it plain so everybody can see that our nation for eight years was under siege. And so I, whether or not Hillary it will be allowed to do that, uh, and if she's not allowed to do that, if she's not given the privilege to be able to do that, uh, we, we possibly will not have an election. I think all of us know that it's a, it's a horrific thing that Hillary, what the emails, what Hillary has done with emails in her private server, 
But what the media has not discussed and is definitely afraid to discuss, but is as obvious, it's the elephant in the room, is what has been covered up about Obama. I agree. And, so and let that, me ask you this question as we go to break. And then I'm going to keep you guys a little bit in the next hour. And then I've got a bunch of the news I'm going to cover. We have this compilation of all our different illnesses, video and audio we're going to play for TV and radio listeners as well. You'll see the Alex Jones show. As we go to break, I asked a question earlier, but I got caught, you know, in all the crosstalk here of myself and others. Why do you think all hell's breaking loose worldwide right now? Oh, yeah, that is a question. Uh, if, you're, if you're focusing it on me, uh, again, it's because of the, the spirituality of our nation, because if our nation can finally be conquered, if the spirit of our nation can be broken, then there is no longer any further opposition. China, That's Russia, right. Russia. The globalists get the world once America falls. And as bad as we are, yeah. though, there's still something about it they've got to take down. That's right. No, you're right. But that's it. That's the answer. For me, that's the answer. I think that's the answer. All right. Well, I'm going to come back and uh, talk to Pastor Manning. Uh, you guys are uh, hang around if you want, but I want to come back and get your take in the next hour for about 20 minutes at least on all these other developments, these other news articles we haven't gotten to, all these other clips. Trump responding. There's so much coming up in the third and fourth hour today. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. All right, it's our final segment, and then our other reporters are going to come back in for about 15, 20 minutes. I've got a bunch of clips, a bunch of angles I haven't covered of this, and we will continue on and also open the phones up and take your phone calls into the fourth hour today that David Knight is hosting. Quite frankly, this has gotten even above my pay grade. I feel like I'm in way over my head, but so is everybody else. These globalists that think they're invincible, that think they're unstoppable, they're being humbled right now, and history shows that happens again and again. They're very smart. They're very deceptive. They have the media on their side, but more and more that media is discredited. So I just have a feeling deep down, Pastor Manning of Atla Worldwide Church, uh, based there in New York City and Harlem, that overall their power is waning even as they build their world government, uh, but that they're going to strike back in some really nasty ways. Other key points you'd like to add, sir? A couple of things. One, Alex, is that since I've been coming on your, your broadcast, and thank you so very much. I mean, you're quite generous. I can never thank you enough. We have been getting members of people coming to our church, our worship services in pretty large numbers. I heard you on Alex Jones. I come to see what's up. Uh, so thank you so very much for that. But the other thing is, is, and we're talking about some really substantial people, Alex. I mean, I, I got to have them on my broadcast and they're coming out of New York City. But my, I only have one tech here today. His wife has an appointment, a sonogram, she's pregnant. He has to leave at two o'clock. Lord knows I hate to have to say this, but I would have I don't have anybody to detect me after he goes. Uh so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stay past two o'clock. Uh no, no, you gotta leave in the next five minutes. So I've got my crew coming in, but just uh, just in closing, what are other key points you'd like to make? Uh that the uh, America will listen. God, this this nation was established and founded on the Word of God. Whether people want to talk about the, the founding fathers being deists or whatever it is, we know that God has blessed this nation, and it will not go down in uh, in ashes with the New World Order who wants to take this this nation away from God and away from the away from the people. So the this is the battleground. It's not in Europe, it's not in Asia. The battleground of good and evil is here in America. And while we may look like we are outnumbered by the globalists and by their financial wherewithal and power, we are not. And 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 that's why we see all of what's going on in terms of our, our economy, our political, uh, the, if you will, presentation globally. But America will stand. It's going to be a terrible battle. We have to get ready also for a very, very difficult time in October and in November if Hillary is not going to be able to stand and be able to either debate Trump or to be able to close the election and, and be able to say she can oh, run. There's no way she can stand up for an hour or two and debate him. What's she going to do? Well, it, it, so we. What, so what's the global? What are what are the Democrats doing now? You said they're planning. You're right. What are they planning on? What are the globalists planning on doing? And what are the people planning on doing? We need a strategy to combat what they're going to come back with. And I, I, I think basically what they want to do is is try to use martial law or e the states of emergencies in various states. To we stop know there's the a gear up for it. We likes of which we've never seen before. Pastor Manning, thank you so much. Looking forward to speaking to you in a few weeks again. Thank you, sir.
Alex, thank you for having me. Thank you for all these people that's coming to our church now as a result of my being on your broadcast. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yep, that's right. Otlo Worldwide Church. Give me that website, folks. It's otlo.org. He's a great guy. I always love having him on. Appreciate him being part of our roundtable. And I think he misunderstood. I think he thought I wanted him on the next hour. The crew's coming back in, but he's got to go. I know he had to go. Now, um, there's so much to cover here. So much I haven't hit. I've got to really be careful here because I've only got one more hour I'm hosting. And then David Knight's coming in. And we've got this epic I use that word too much, but this is epic times. I have this really important, compelling, informative, amazing six-minute video that Rob Dew put together. It's powerful on radio, but even more powerful in video that's being uploaded to YouTube right now. It'll be on Infowars.com the next 15, 20 minutes. We're going to uh, premiere it here coming up uh, in the next hour. In fact, in about 10 minutes, it just proves Hillary Clinton is on her last legs. This has got to go viral. Stay with us, but right now they're meeting in D.C. You know, Pastor Manning says a lot of really interesting things that people make jokes out of on the Internet, like they do about me. They take it out of context. But I always want to have him on because he always, two or three times, says something really profound that I haven't heard anybody else say. And that's it. I have that liner that says, you know, before we can be great again, we must be free again. But it's true. Trump is young of heart. And he's, he's not perfect, none of us are, but he doesn't want to, he's not out to get people. He doesn't want to make you poor so he can rule over you. He wants to make you wealthy. He's into prosperity. And Trump wants to raise America's confidence in our spirit. We've been beaten, we've been divided, we've been attacked. It, it's just been, the globalists are out to get this country. And we've been used for great evil. We've done bad things. But you compare it to other countries. <laughs> America has changed the world for a lot of people in a lot of good ways. The good parts of America, there's a spirit, there's something there, the Renaissance, the enlightenment, the, the true expression of the best of Christianity. And the system wants to shut it down. You go back 200 years ago, you know, the British Empire and others said, we can't allow this American system to flourish because it's free market, it's independent, it, 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 it'll end our monopolies. And the British were more free market than the rest of Europe. That's why they were beating Europe. But they couldn't compete with something even better. Didn't mean we were perfect, but the idea of creating more wealth, humans getting smarter, humans living longer, prosperity, the average person having the answers, the average person like Admiral Nimitz from just an average family in Fredericksburg, Texas, landlocked, becoming the head of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. I mean, back then, folks, they were not looking for people that were from the big family. In fact, that was really looked down upon. It was looking for who was the best, who did do the best in combat and the test, and who took the most action. In Europe and other places, it's not like that. In Japan, and they're really smart folks, I'm not putting them down, it is about what family you're born into. You can go back and say, well, that's because a thousand years ago they were the best. Whatever. It, it, it causes this corruption, and there is a real attack on prosperity, a real attack on small business. That's what Dr. Steve Pachenik always talks about. I know I said... Get the other crew back in here, and they'll come back in at the bottom of the hour. I hadn't looked at the schedule that was updated. I, I, I was trying to get Pachenik on today. We were able to. Just wanted him to pop in for one segment. He was on a month ago and said, clearly she has neurological problems. Clearly she was in the hospital for a year. She's an independent panel to come in and look at her. And now even Bernstein of the uh, Washington Post has, of, of Bob Edwards and, of course, Bernstein fame, have come out and said she needs to do an hour talk in front of everybody with her doctor. We need to see this woman more than 10 minutes. What in the hell is going on? This is an obvious cover-up, and I just cannot believe the system bet everything on this like she was invincible. The bottom of the hour, I'll, I'll air this amazing six-minute report that Rob Dew has put together. I don't know what you call this. I mean, total proof that Hillary's health is gone. Uh, or the history of Hil Hillary's health problems, uh, or a special report. Or the Hillary's, you know, Hillary's public health records released. I mean, because these are our public health records, not Hillary's health records released. Hillary's public health records released. You should probably just describe that in the description. But I mean, her public health record is there to see. Since whatever happened in 2012, the word is brain surgery. The word is brain tumor. The word is bleeding and her sinus into her brain. Most people don't survive a stroke like that. They admit that went on. And she's on all these weird drugs and it doesn't make sense. 
So we'll have a focus interview with Dr. Steve Pachenik, who is a uh, board certifying uh, psychiatrist uh, and, of course, overseeing whole medical facilities and has a degree in understanding the neurology and the physicality of the brain problems and mental illness. Because, listen, I'm not a jet pilot. And I didn't go to the moon, but I can look at Hillary Clinton and tell you that lady's got one foot in the grave. She's dragging the other one into the grave with her right now. So what does that signify for COG as well? What does that signify for the future of this republic with these emergency meetings being held? This is incredible. Dr. Steve Pachenik is an MD, PhD, an American psychiatrist, former State Department official, author, and publisher. And he's headed up entire medical facilities, treated world leaders, you name it. Run psychological warfare from major agencies. StevePachenik.com is Twitter, is Twitter.com, at Steve Pachenik. And he's just with us for a segment or two because he's a busy guy. And uh, the woods are lovely, dark, and deep. But we got a lot of news to cover before we sleep. Some special breaking reports, you name it. But here's the two areas I want to cover with Pachenik, and he can add whatever quadrant he wants into this. A, am I wrong at a gut level that this is a big victory that mainstream media has been discredited? Obviously, Hillary's very sick. No matter how many medical doctors they fire, what they do, major medical associations even say she looks really ill. What in the hell is she doing taking these medications? What Pachinik said over a month ago is what Drew said a week later, um, that what is she doing taking armored thyroid and Coumadin? This is insane. My dad's an oral surgeon. He's, he knows that's crazy and was showing me, you know, the, just the drug interactions. It's how you'd kill somebody. So uh, Drew says, I'm worried about you, Hillary, and they fire him. What's really going on with her health? What does this signify for the media that's blown up their face? And then the big enchilada. They're meeting, this political even admits, in D.C., the Democrats, on whether they're going to go to the Electoral College, the states, and try to basically put the election off. That is in mainstream news. We have it boiled down in articles at Infowars.com. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's good to discredit the system, but what in the world is going on? Obviously, Pachenik has a lot of context in, in the military and other areas that have been trying to block all this. So we'll get his approximation of what's happening. Dr. Pachenik, thanks for coming on. It's my pleasure, Alex. As usual, uh, we were right. A month ago, I said she was severely ill. I said she had a physical mental illness. I explained it in detail. I didn't wish her harm, but I would, we turned out to be correct. Uh, doctor, her doctor was wrong. Uh, she's not in excellent health. Lisa Bardak, who was trained, her doctor was trained at Cornell, where I trained, should have done a lot better uh, workup. This is, she cannot run for the presidency of the United States. It's as categorical as I said a month ago. I said it yesterday to my people. I said, here's the following. Number one, the media is discredited. It turns out that a lot of our Twitters now have been retweeted by people on the mainstream media. But despite all that, we have a major problem right now. The Democratic National Committee has to meet, but so does the President of the United States and Biden. The issue now is one of the maintaining the uh, integrity of the republic and the transition of power. This is not the first time I've encountered this problem. I encountered it when I was a medical student with John F. K. Uh, John F. Kennedy, who was psychotic, had Addison's disease. We encountered it with Nixon, who had been in the hospital under stress. We encountered it with Reagan, who also had problems, and so on and so forth. So the republic has to now go back to its intelligence and its national security uh, elements, including the generals, chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, including the President of the United States and the Vice President. This is a apolitical issue which has to deal with the transition of power and the election of a person who has to be viable. The Democratic National Committee can pick Biden. I have no problem with that. Or they can pick Sanders. I have no problem with that. But in both cases, they have to reveal the medical records of either Biden, who's already had an aneurysm, who's had multiple problems, although he's been effective these are the his own uh, uh, legislation and the fact that he can recuperate. Sanders is in pretty good physical health. That's not up to me. What's up to me is the fact that we must open up the medical records of Trump, which he will do. And now, the in fact, reportedly, he's at the doctor today. I've got that from the folks. That's correct. But the key element now, Alex, and what you have been part of, and again, I'm not uh, throwing hosannas at you, is that you opened up and allowed us to open up the truth, 
once again. And ironically, the truth came on a double truth with 9-11 and her passing out. Was yeah, that not it, biblical? Was that not archetypal? That is biblical. That is Greek tragedy. That is an amazing statement. If one believes in a God, which I do, it's his statement or her statement saying, you will be punished for what you have done, and so will the Republic. Cheney, Bush, Zelik, and a whole bunch of the neocons that she was working with. Now we have to concern ourselves about the Republic, and that's one of the issues that I've suggested to my people, that they think very carefully, that they have doctors from all four services, the Navy, Air Force, Army, that they have the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the director of national intelligence, Clapper, along with President Obama, who I believe will do the best he can for the republic in terms of transition of power, as well as Biden and others. Into the yeah, because they're not going to get away with trying to pull some, some scam. I mean, it's going to no, blow up. No. I, I, I honestly don't believe that in a time of, of uh, crisis, which this is, quite frankly, where we predicted this correctly. This is not an issue of whether we were right, which we were, and the media was because wrong. Because I haven't used that term, but probably I've said this looks like a super historical crisis we're in. It is. And, and honestly, Alex, you and, and the people have been part of this. I mean, this is the world. Well, it's the people. It's Drudge. It's you. It's all of us together because the mainstream know, media has discredited itself. I want to make it clear because we've taken so much punishment on no, top right. of it. You're right. Not only, uh, remember, just a month ago, she even said we were part of a conspiracy theory of medicine. And we still well, uh, she came out and said I had a dark heart and was the enemy and that our media should be shut down. That's correct. But be it as it may, right now we have another issue which you should address with other people about the transition of power in the republic. Not a usurpation of power. Obama understands this. I have full faith he will not usurp power. I have full faith that Biden will not usurp power. I know some of the people in the Democratic Party. They knew very well when I said a month ago, these people know me and they know my capability to be a physician. I wasn't kidding that she was impaired. I don't wish her that. The part that really shocks me, Alex, and I got to say this to the audience as well, is, you know, neither Chelsea, Bill Clinton, or anybody in her family made a major effort to stop her from destroying herself physically and mentally. That's what shocked me. And I happen to have met Chelsea, and I happen to know her, and she's a very caring individual. Why no one in her family stopped this nonsense, I can't explain. That's my biggest point, is what is Hillary thinking when she's obviously been so sick for years and is deteriorating quickly that she could get away with this? It really shows delusion. Correct. That is total self-delusion. You and I have been talking about it for years on end. It's pathological, but now... Finally, the body, the body said, no more, no more delusion, no more stress. I can't handle it. She so let me ask you this question. As a medical doctor, as an expert on the brain looking at this, yes. let me, clearly she's uh, uh, deteriorating quickly. She's wearing the glasses for people that have seizures. She's clearly having a seizure when she falls over. How are they going to spin this? And uh, am I correct? It looks like she's uh, deteriorating quickly. What could be the real cause? Well, the real cause is that she has a tumor of the brain and also a tumor in the lung. We don't know where the, uh, any, any element metastasized. What I do know is a continuous fainting and syncope, syncope, which we call fainting, as well as the seizures and the fact that she's had people who've tried to cover up. The, the answer is not a good answer. I don't wish this, but the inevitable outcome will be some form of disability, and I hope not death. But this is not a course that has an upward uh, slope to it. And that's why I'm saying to the Democratic National Committee, listen carefully. You have physicians there who work for me. Jim McDermott is a board-certified uh, psychiatrist, an adult and child. You have Rand Paul. You have Ben, well, ben Carson, a Republican. But you have 19 physicians in Congress. Any one of them or all of them should examine her and make the final determination. What's interesting, Alex, is historically we physicians have been very much a part of the republic. I'm not an aberration. 11% of the Declaration of Independence was written by physicians. And 9% of the Constitution were written by physicians. So you have carried on, along with me and others, a very noble tradition of allowing physicians to maintain the integrity of the republic. She cannot run. That is 
Absolutely. So what do you expect them to do? I mean, there's different things, but they're openly in the news talking about you uh, having to go to the Electoral College of uh, the states. I mean, this is crazy. It, 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 it will not go to the Electoral College because the Electoral College does not represent the will of the people. What it has to do is have a temporary uh, abeyance while Trump, you know, continues his nomination or is, is a campaign. Either they put Biden in or Bernie Sanders. But the reality is oh, we don't want to push the, 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 the end of the election back, right? They might, and I don't have a problem with that. And the reason for that is that we have a crisis. It should have been predictable what happened. But the truth of the matter is, once again, this is what happens when you have nefarious deeds within the Hillary. No, I agree. And this arrogance, this, this delusion. So it's not only arrogance, but it's the nature of willfully harming the republic. I, you know, the issue of arrogance is one. But the fact that they were willing to harm the republic, to put somebody in who was not capable of running the republic, that's inexcusable. That is, uh, that is treason, and for me, that's many other issues. But let's address this issue. The elections will have to be delayed. The Democratic National Committee can sponsor whomever they want. They have to be very careful about it. The president of the United States will not usurp power because the, the, the military and the intelligence community will be on alert for that. He understands that, and he understands that we're willing to work with him on a, a mutually assured basis of construction, not destruction. So this is one of the times in America and in the world where the world is watching us, and what happens now will show the best elements of our country. Hillary will have to resign. We'll have to pull back. And, well, I think it'll overall, even if they delayed it two or three months at, you know, into next year, I think it overall will put Trump way ahead, discrediting the Democrats and the mainstream media. I think this is a demarcation point where you can really mark the true death of the mainstream media. We're going to come back with one more segment, see if you agree with me. Sure. Dr. Pachinik, stevepachinik.com, twitter.com, at stevepachinik, P-I-E-C-Z-E-N-I-K. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. Regardless of what you think, history is happening now. We have crossed the point of no return. We are at the event. A video up on Infowars.com of people wearing the exact same glasses that Hillary wears when they basically try to stop having seizures. Dr. Steve Pachinik uh, is our guest. I have a clip here uh, I want to play. Let's go ahead and go to that clip. Like you, I just, uh, I see what I see. The coughing fit was uh, a week ago, so I assume that was pneumonia also. I mean, I would think it would have been, so something's going on. But I just hope she gets well and gets back on the trail, and uh, we'll, we'll be seeing her at the debate. Even when she came out an hour and a half later and hugged that child in that stage propaganda, like out of some third world you know, dictatorship, she really looks worse by the day, uh, Dr. Pachenik. But, but, but going back before the break, I was asking the question, I mean, overall, doesn't all of this just advance the populism, the new Americanism, uh, the patriotism we see? I mean, I think overall this is a big win for the new media, Trump, and the awakening. Yeah, I would agree with you because it's taken five years for the uh, new patriotism and the new America to arise after the 9-11 uh, nonsense and storylines that have continued and they're just not working. But beyond that, what it really tells us is how do we handle in a more media crisis. Ironically, today there's been a ceasefire in Syria and now it's up to the president to decide what he wants to do domestically. So we are being judged, and more importantly than Hillary. Hillary's really not as significant as everybody thinks at this moment. What's far more important is how the republic reacts to a crisis like this. If they decide to delay the election or they decide that she runs in the election and they decide that Trump may or may not win an election, that is what the world will be looking at, and that is what the stock markets will be reflecting. So it's an important time for us, and actually the new America – that you're part of, I'm part of, and others, it's a populism that broke through the lies, distortions, and corruptions. But at the same time now, we have to show that we have understanding, compassion, and empathy. Absolutely. Now is where we have to continue not getting into race wars and stuff that Soros Correct. wants. We have to really have some very, very serious uh, smarts here. Correct. 
And what has to happen now is we have to be judicious, we have to be, as we've always been, serious, and we have to understand what is the next evolution in the republic and maintaining the stability of the republic with our great warriors, our great intelligence service, and now we have to be able to maintain that capability financially and politically so that the world says, my God, only in America could they get through this. Absolutely. Well, I know for a fact Trump was approached by great patriots, some of which you know. Of and, and, and he already knew the country was in trouble, and they actually drafted him in. Uh, and the fact that he's done all this uh, is, is just amazing. This is so historic. I'm just really worried about the fact that they're so arrogant. It's, it's clear to you and others she needs to step down immediately. They're so arrogant. They might just run her, even though she might even be able to walk. I mean, I... I well, you may be right, Alex, but uh, the irony of self-destruction is that it really does become self-destruction, and she will not make it. I can guarantee you, as a physician, she will not make it. If even she gets elected to the White House, well, give us your brief prognosis. Looking at her, I mean, she's it's a not good. I mean, the fact that she coughed a, a week and a half ago, I timed her coughing in Long Island. It was two and a half minutes without stopping. Subsequently, I watched how she fell down. That's not the first time, the second or the third time. Her doctor knows very well that the full scans and the CAT scans and MRI and all the rest that was done at physician and surgeons, what I've said for over a month, will reveal that she has tumors, she has thrombosis, she is not well. She's not capable of running for the president of the United States. Then what are they thinking? That, that discredits the whole power structure behind her, that they're crazy to run a corpse. Well, the point is it's wishful thinking, and what she will argue and what Bill Clinton will argue is, look, we have the chance to get in there, albeit then we'll pass it on to Tim Kaine. The truth is Tim Kaine is not qualified to be president of the United States. By the way, it's even in the Hill, you talked about this two weeks ago, that he is basically these Marxist connections. All this oh, weird I mean, he's pathetic. He's just a political operative who grew up, you know, it was a Jesuit who worked with the CIA, denied it, had the New York Times have to write back to me to say, oh, he's not CIA. Really? I could care less. But the truth of the matter is everything he said about Honduras was an absolute lie, and he was very much involved. All right, in closing, you made a lot of predictions. You don't like to make them, but we got 60 seconds. Do you think, I mean, what's going to come out of these meetings the next few days that they admit are ongoing, a political I admits? I think the DNC will ask for postponement of an election. Good Lord. Well, no, it's, it's good America, because the American public has to decide. And at this point, the new American Republic, which we represent, so-called conspiracy people, which is ironic. We're the only ones who are speaking the truth for 15 years, and the real conspiracy is broken down, all the way from 9-11 to Hillary Clinton. That's right. Their conspiracy screwed. Trump this keeps the nomination. They have to get a new nominee. This Correct. is going to be amazing. We'll and talk to you soon, win. Dr. Pachenik. Thank Either you. way, he'll win. Either way, he'll win. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, buddy. Powerful uh, interview. We'll be back. Let me tell you, the discussions are going on right now about suspending the election. It's in mainstream news. Obama, the DNC, they're meeting. I mean, what do they do if Hillary has to drop out? I personally say, hey, you still got 55 days, 56 days. She needs to drop out now right. and put in whatever little demon they're going to have that have this election. But the feds are coming in to save the election. Epic time to be alive. Got a bunch of video clips I want to get to. We are the deplorables, the horrible, hardworking people that That's promote freedom here. We're just horrible. But before we go any further, we are running a special until Wednesday. May have to stop it actually tomorrow. 30 to 40 percent off on super high quality, incredibly low priced foods. This is the food I've chosen for my family. It's my Patriot Supply. We sell their entire spectrum of food, lowest prices, but I can get around contract rules because they private label for us with their biggest seller. They're one of the biggest companies out there. Great folks. With InfoWars Select, which means select quality, but it's their full spectrum of food and 30 to 40 percent off. You can buy the My Patriot Supply food right next to it for 30 to 40 percent more if you'd like. Uh, but again, it's all high quality. InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free. We can answer all your questions. 888 253 3139. The new film, $5 million budget, Amerigeddon, about a globalist plan to come in and take over. Great way to wake folks up. It's available. Get a second copy and get a uh, free bottle of colloidal silver with that. We have the Mr. Maddow special because she demonized it last Thursday for her entire hour. Uh, where you can get a big discounts on all the different nutraceuticals that she demonized, including Super Mel Vitality, 20% off on that. Survival Shield Nason I and, and, uh, X2 and, of course, Deep Cleanse. And so much more.
at InfoWarsLife.com. That takes you right to the Nutraceuticals page, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And, of course, every person that gets a five ninety five dollars membership each month uh, to watch the InfoWars Nightly News, first and exclusively, at PrisonPlanet.tv, 20 people can use each membership. And, and this is how we fund one of the only true independent Americana libertarian classical liberal operations in the world and you see how i'm there i'm not bragging i mean you couldn't drag me away quite frankly saturday sunday night i mean I'm, i was working till 3 a.m last night uh, zimmerman was up here till like four or five in the morning he was back here at 10 a.m when i got here and i mean because wild horses couldn't drag me away this is history happening people this is exciting and they just hope we just sit there and buy their lies no we're countering them with facts you are just as important as Joe Biggs, Leanne McAdoo, myself, Matt Drudge years ago, you know, would tweet this out and tell reporters this and told Paul Watson this at dinner, you know, years and years ago and to told me this, you know, at dinner. You're just as important as the New York Times. And you know what? I take it further. They've been discredited. We're more important. But, but what he's saying is we're here. We're covering something. We're, we're pointing something out, just like that citizen that videotaped Hillary collapsing with the seizure. I've seen two members of my family. You know, that have epilepsy from head injuries. You know, you're sitting there talking to them, they're just fine. All of a sudden they go, oh, oh, boom. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's clear and it's happening. I want to play this clip. We've got a bunch of these clips. I want to boom, boom, boom. Uh, but Leanne, you've been chomping at the bit. And then Joe Biggs, take a few minutes. You've got the floor on just your overall view of where this is going, how crazy this is. Well, I think it's so incredible how the, it, the media immediately, when she was coughing because of the allergies, they immediately went out and said, Yes, it, uh, the pollen was really high that day. And just it's like, just do your job and report in a way that you're not biased. You don't have to be her um, cheerleaders. You know, just do your job and be an independent, non-biased journalist. And then, of course, you played the clip earlier of the two women making excuses, saying how, um, you know, how heavily she was dressed. And, well, if I would have been out there in that same outfit, I would have also passed out. Oh, my goodness. So on the one hand, they're trying to say, don't call Hillary Clinton weak, it's sexist to talk about her health. But then you have these women saying how hard it is to be dressed in a jacket. I mean, think about all the men in three-piece suits out there. That By the way, we looked it up, just like out. Joe said. At the time she was out there at 10 or 11, it was like 75, 76. Yeah. The high was 82. This is total BS. Hillary's it's, just so weak, her clothing, it's so hard. Well, she wasn't wearing that thick mouse suit like she normally is. Right. She was wearing an actual pantsuit like an actual business attire that you would normally see a woman in that position wear right and, and she looks skinnier and more frail because deep down that's what she is skinny frail she's weak she's sick but when she puts this huge mal coat on she looks a lot bigger and more you know just bloated out or whatever but yeah well, sure well, she was probably the lightest she was dressed what about how she also has to go to like uh, Labor Day events and stuff where there's other crowds. No one right. even wants to see her. We go with camera people. There's like 50 people, 20 people. This is a total facade. Right. They, they what to, were the elite thinking? <laughs> they had to close off the room that they gave her uh, when she went to go speak with um, the church groups because no one showed up. So they had to make the room smaller to give the appearance. That yeah, they brought those crowd. walls in. And what do you think of Pachinik saying brain tumor, lung tumor? That guy's like, you know, inside. Well, I no. mean, it's like as they keep reporting on her stories, they're like, well, she had the over uh, dehydration and overheating due to this uh, fainting spell. And then it was some kind of gastro. And she's just like so many people that have cancer, which God bless them. They go, I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it. Yeah. And then they die, you know, and it's sad. But I'm telling you, it's like I'm beating it. She's just had like a consecutive rolling out of illnesses year after year after year. It's just, you know, to have syncope like that where you're just constantly fainting. And giving yourself concussion and bleeding tumors in your brain. And, I mean, come on. But I've got to be honest, Leanne and Joe Biggs. If you just tuned in, Alex Jones here speaking with Infowars.com. I, I knew this was all coming and things were getting so surreal. But now they're openly in mainstream news talking about suspending the election. And Hillary's collapsing. And we're the leaders exposing it. And it's just like, what's coming next? I mean, what is it like for you guys to work here? Well, for me, just realizing how we really are shaping the narrative and kind of you, you sit back and kind of go, whoa, we said that and now it's happening. It makes me just want to start speaking like really powerfully into existence of how we really want things to be rather than just exposing it. But just being like, you know what? Trump's going to win. America's going to be great again.
patriotism is on the rise. That's because that's the right thing. It's got yeah. the history behind it. And so many of these people just go with whatever the media says. Right. And you say, listen, stop believing them. Yeah, that, that's the interesting part of being here is actually doing the research, looking at the facts, watching all the videos, watching her speeches, going to them, being a part of it, and then watching the mainstream media come out and spin it completely uh. in a whole other way. I was expecting today to to turn on the TV and hear them go, well, you know, she was just completely overwhelmed by all the memories that happened during 9-11, <laughs> and that is what caused her to just fall. She was so overwhelmed. You just said something really important, Joe. <laughs> we are able, because this is our job, to full-time do this. The general public will be just as good as we were. They're just too busy trying to make a living and exactly. take care of their kids right. and deal with all the taxes and regulations. We do this full-time. So that's really a luxury. Mm -hmm. my, my job is a luxury mm -hmm. uh, to be able to really fight this tyranny. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And one of the questions you asked earlier is, you know, what is this going to lead to? Where is this all going? You know, her health is failing extremely fast. And, you know, yesterday we saw her collapse. We saw the videos. And there's a new article out at the Hill right now. It says Tim Kaine's radical roots. It says, according to the media, Tim Kaine took a life transforming mission trip to Latin America in 1980. Conveniently left out of these stories are the radical reality of the Cold War in Latin America and Tim Kaine's Soviet sympathizing mentors. This is a very interesting article. It says, connected dots with a little history and an alarming picture emerges of Kaine's adventures with radicals and revolu uh, revolutionaries in 1980. And the truth Latin is it was America. even worse. He was setting them up. They said, Shinnick talked about it. He's even worse. He's not even a real commie. He goes and sets them up. Hmm. They said that he doesn't leave them, though. Bernie Sanders? Yeah. They said that he embraced the interpretation of the gospel known as liberation theology. Yeah. That's the so whole he, Reconquista Ford so, Foundation. Yeah. Right. He, he's like a Marxist Jesuit. Same as the Pope. Pope says, got everybody in, but not my palace. Mm -hmm. Oh, these guys are incredible. I want to play a few clips. Uh, here, we've got a ton of them. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, what was the first clip you guys were telling me during the break was important to play? You, uh, you were right, but I forget which one it was, Matt. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Hillary Clinton, basket of deplorables. Uh, we have Trump's uh, attack ad responding to it. Let's play some of those clips. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic... Islamophobic, you name it. And unfortunately, there are people like that. Now, here's Stephanie Cutter, a DNC operative that's worked for Obama, going even further, saying they're all deplorable. So, I mean, this is true demonization. Yeah. And, and, and here's the deal. I know so many liberals, so many people that support Trump because they actually remember stuff Trump did. Conservatives ought to be the ones that actually, if you want to get down to brass tacks, like mainline, super Christian conservatives who are great people, but sometimes ought to, you know, get the beam out of their own eye. Because Trump is not, you know, any, you know anti, you know, gay, where he just hates these people, you know. And, and Trump really is liberal on a lot of things. The difference is he wants prosperity. He's Americana. That's why they hate him. He's not a globalist. I mean, the fact is he just, the, the problem is he talks off the top of his you know, heart, like I do. They can take it out of context. But here's the next clip. My Nixonian lurking in there. Stephanie, it's tough to defend uh, the remark, is it, or no? Do you think it's tough to re but defend the remark, deplorables, to do the to, to stereotype a group of people or not? not. I, I think that her only mistake is that she said half of his supporters were deplorable. Does anybody around this table, have they not seen Trump's rallies? Have they not seen Trump's own remarks? Yeah. Uh, he he is attracting a certain type of voter. She <laughs> gave a whole speech they on describing them. They're called the alt-right. And they they tweet racist things. He retweets them. Racist he says things. it from the stuff. All stuff. they push is racist. From recent Research in this election, we know that right, his own words Hillary, calling Mexico. Donald Trump used his own plane to land because he had a medical staff on there to help someone out last week, I believe it was. Then he also used his plane to go get people that needed to be rescued. This guy's not deplorable. He goes out and goes above and beyond the well, duty. he's not a lazy ass. He went to Mexico. He went to Louisiana. It's so obvious that the elite are so arrogant. They would run a doddering, collapsing, brain-damaged uh, uh, person and then, and then think we're so dumb we can't see how sick she is when three speeches on Monday she had to cancel in hacking fits. And then she's gone all week and pops back up and falls on her butt and then comes out of her house 
in a stage wag the dog little girl oh little girl i mean this is ridiculous yeah she's canceled her trips to california she's supposed to go to today i want to play this clip and and and, and uh, because it's for radio audiences we can also narrate over it some the full video is going up on infowars.com and prisonplanet.com in fact it may already be up but do spend a lot of time on this a compilation of a lot of her different health problems and and, and things that happen so we're going to air uh that right now and then basically narrate Rob Dew's six minute clip that our news director uh, put together. We're gonna post this all over InfoWars. We're gonna tweet it, we're gonna Facebook it at Real Alex Jones. Please get this video out. Let's go ahead and start it right now. We, we are in an information war and we are losing that war. You bet you are. Um, do you also know that Hillary Clinton uses a wheelchair? Her personal vehicle has had to be outfitted with a wheelchair lift because she is not a person who can actually walk. She secretly uses a wheelchair all those times and you think you've seen her conspiracy. walking. She hasn't been walking. Here, let's hit pause you know and back this up. I'm going to skip this break. It's too important. <laughs> think about this. It's so ridiculous. She's saying last week she lied so that I said she couldn't walk when the Secret Service said she has these access vehicles, and then we actually get photos. There's a wheelchair, too. It's worse than what the Secret Service told us. <laughs> Quarter million dollars They said upgrade. equipment. We're not going to tell you. Just go. They said, please come to the rallies. <laughs> they said, put your crews on the rallies. You'll see. To be fair, they didn't even give us any info. They just said, if you come, you will see. I mean, right. And we did. There's a damn wheelchair coming out the back. Yeah, Millie sees the, <laughs> I mean, the gurney, what? wheeling the gurney over. Oh, my head. God. And then she says, we're lying. And three days later, it comes out. Right. She needs to apologize. The lie she said about us, is we didn't say that, comes true. Did so, you send Mr. Maddow a box of super, super male vitality? Well, she did have the super female, right? Oh, I don't, I think. Well, that's Chris Hayes. Is. I can't ever tell which one's which. <laughs> I told everybody I'm not always gay, but when I am, it's for Maddow or Trump. It's like the dream trip for me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop right now. Let, I'm sorry. I already bought fried chicken for the whole office in celebration. Uh, I'm serious. That's why we celebrate in my family. Let's uh, let's go back to the uh, the video. Here it is. With a wheelchair lift because she is not a person who can actually walk. She secretly uses a wheelchair all those times you think you've seen her walking. She hasn't been walking. Did you know that? Did you also know that Hillary Clinton has Parkinson's disease? Her favorite place disease? to eat is no. land. You, you could not make up. <laughs> her saying this is she has to be, she can't walk. Sorry, go ahead. You know what her favorite place to eat at is? Little Caesars Pizza? <laughs> Little Caesars Pizza. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to be fair. People with that public stuff, it's very oh, serious. Yeah. It's hit my family very hard. But them lying about it, she's a public figure, it's fair game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and this person is. All the veterans she's gotten killed. The Christian she turned Al Qaeda loose on. Honestly. The rapist, child rapist that she, she's gotten off. Yep. Yeah, she, she's fair game, folks. He's deplorable. Absolutely. Exactly. Anyone who has an entire book, website, everything dedicated to the Clinton body count should not be. And by the way, Google's deplorable. been caught censoring that again. And oh, yeah. now they're censoring this. Yeah. Well, okay, let's go back to the footage they don't want you to see. I've had to pay licensing fees and all this crap for this. Here, here we go. Yeah. These things are true. I know they are true because I read them in the headlines. Here, I will prove it to you. Uh, here was the shock headline on Hillary Clinton's wheelchair vehicle. Today. Uh, just one column over from that, there well, was they, also this she, she, seemingly competing news. Issue of uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, d does Hillary Clinton have Parkinson's disease? The subhead and, and there, info, we can all about? see yeah. that she has some very serious health problems. God just delivers problems. this. <laughs> <laughs> and our, our private media cannot fill that gap. Uh, the media spinning lies and misinformation to try to get us off of that hot button that we're on. So, Well, exactly. Watson's got an article out today just She's how the job. Clinton campaign is really pushing for the media to blatantly cover up, lie, anything. They do not want to touch this Hillary's health. They think this could have the potential to derail her entire campaign. Buddy. How are you feeling? Back, a little girl runs up. Oh, look. Oh, here's... Clinton, you said she was Hope standing on a curb now with a protective detail, come. waiting for her motorcade. Uh, they were surprised to see her because she wasn't supposed to be leaving yet, so they had to wait for the motorcade two or three minutes. There's, there's the black guy that's always there with the pen. Yeah, and her doctor. Off the curb, and the reason they got a really big guy is she's falling over, man. It's hard to pick up that way. Exactly. The van. Uh, her protective detail oh, they, they drag her. You see her feet just go completely limp. And, then the van and look, they all surround her because they're used to this. They grab her shoe and flag down her. They're like, okay. Well, that's what the Secret Service told us. They said, listen, it's getting worse. We 
said, well, following, they, the other she's two falling down they constantly. Left, they won't tell uh, us what it is. Zero They're not early, doctors. It's epilepsy. Uh, just moments ago, right. because of some Again, only a brain tumor. You medical episode having all that the time. Hillary Clinton was suffering. It Extremely humid temperatures. She was adorned in a, a long sleeved oh. coat, uh, what about a, a all the pants other time suit. She's in and she so was adorned a royal. She was in this corpse. Into the golden garment. She was a little bit unstable there. She was a little bit unstable. Like dragging her feet. I love how they're gaslighting us in real time. Hit pause. That was like a race car crash. It was like blowing out. Like it's a little unstable. <laughs> like rolling down the. <laughs> well, I love how they're like rolling the video while the lady's narrating. Is this not totally the best comedy? I mean, I'm sorry she's sick, but these people are funny, man. No. But, but did you see how quickly the rest of that crew moved in around her? As soon right. as she collapsed, you saw a human wall. Just well, Secret Service said we're not going to tell you everything. Just come to the come to her events and watch. And we get there, it's like ambulances, gurneys, gurneys. people <laughs> running around everywhere. <laughs> EMT Secret hey. Service. How much man? It <laughs> blacked out ambulance <laughs> She's with body on armor on, and it gets worse. <laughs> you know the mainstream media's been getting all this; it knows it. These guys, oh these God. guys are. I bet Matt Al changes Hillary's diapers. Uh, <laughs> Well, These I mean, guys are way more armored than the freaking medical people we had in Iraq and Afghanistan. <laughs> here, 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 here. Let's go back to the rest oh, of this God. BS. Here it is. What I'm wearing now to be appropriately dressed to anchor a broadcast. It's not terribly hot today, John. Uh, it's warm. <laughs> Certainly warm and warm at the scene. Certainly warm. Uh, but again, Hillary Clinton, my source, the real was 15 story feet away, is says she appeared to be having some warming. sort of medical yeah. episode. She has an unbelievably <laughs> challenging taxing schedule that would be so physically for anybody, <laughs> right? Let alone Trump somebody. Has a way more um, tough schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. Yeah. This this was was so, so let's this make this so woman mishandled. who can't deal uh, with the whole issue of tight schedules and hot clothes. This only reinforces. All the, the conspiracy theories. You know, why is it that an advanced and fairly well-educated country like ours is nevertheless getting to be as susceptible to political conspiracy theories as broadly uneducated countries in faraway lands? Uh, because the media is dumbing everyone down. And there he is, like, helping her. She's completely out of her mind right there. Keep talking. You handle it. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Okay, so you here we are. But there's nothing wrong with her. I'm out on the campaign with her. Aside from that cough, she has more energy than I do or half the press corps, which is a lot younger than her, the rest of the press corps. Oh, yeah. But the fact is that they have only made things worse. Because That's what happened. See, now she's called the press back around. Now they're allowed to come <laughs> report when she has her little stage. <laughs> and that's when I got spit on that time. Sitting and if she row. has pneumonia right here, she should be... She's spreading all that contagion by coughing with. I'm glad I wore that uh, Ebola. Uh, and of course, it's all made up. I mean, she doesn't have pneumonia. I know. Why serious... is it that we get more and more susceptible conspiracy theories as susceptible conspiracy theories as time goes on? We don't seem like the kind of country where they would have as much traction as they do now Especially in our contemporary era in politics. Part of the reason why we're so susceptible to conspiracy theories right now is that. Guys like Alex Jones make a ton of money so circulating powerful. them as widely as they possibly can. They use multiple platforms. They use talk radio and the internet, and they live stream. They're kind of the fake TV enemies. shows. Well, how dare they make you a very exactly good living doing it? The, the, I, the think I know they always announce, he has sponsors and sell stuff. Let's go to break. Well, I, I mean, it's like they're, they got, they're selling Prozac. I'm selling vitamin C, you know. Exactly. No, I'm so evil. I'm selling yeah. T-shirts. I'm so bad. Yeah, how dare He's you on the things. radio and TV and the internet. And, and, and How dare he? I don't think she was able to stand up long enough because she didn't have that earpiece in her ear anymore. Remember, we called her out on that. And that's gone. So her handler wasn't able to tell her. And to we didn't even do this last week. In front of the other. One front but front we blew other. that up. They had digitized. They were so lazy. They had digitized it in those photos out. The MSNBC executive came out and said, no, that's a ball of wax with light reflecting off of it that looks like an earpiece. <laughs> they blurred it. The damn pixels are there. I mean, these people are crazy, dude. Because they got to be telling her, okay, okay. People say, well, she's really smart. She doesn't need help. Yeah, until five years ago with her brain tumor. The guys on the earpiece. When she's flipping out, they got to go. It's okay. It's okay. The, guy, right. the guys that is running the earpiece is like, all right, you're losing the crowd right now. Bark like a dog. <laughs> All right, now make an extremely crazy looking face right now. <laughs> I know, what the hell's. All right, let's finish up with the video. Here it is.
because of it for a long time. And usually this kind of stuff has no major effect on the United States of America other than lowering our median IQ a couple of points and making us seem slightly more embarrassing on so an international MS stage. Each. Right, for every additional year they circulate their insane Who's alien lizard people feet? theories of everything. We get a little bit dumber feet. and that's the major effect it has on the United oh, States of pause. America. But this year he didn't even hear the clang. This metal bolt falls out. It goes clean. That's yeah, probably the what, injection what thing. That was probably one of the needles or whatever the cartridges. As a guy comes up and just jabs yeah. her really quick. Yeah, because you see, when she came out, even with the uh, forum, she mm -hmm. was like, her eyes were like, you know, she was pumped up on some some kind of. Drug yeah, she looked drugged and not have seizures, but also then they give you amphetamine on top of it. Or, right. I mean, she looked whacked out of her noggin. Right. Uh, let's give the launch codes to her immediately. <laughs> uh, please continue. <laughs> And then the secrecy yesterday, and for an hour and a half, the press corps, uh, the protective press Look, they pool, just drag the her pool in. of reporters, which Loses is supposed to shoe. be with her just for this kind of emergency, they are kept back at the ceremonies. They don't they said know they threw that she's the not told that she's the seat, like she was just a hunk of meat. Right. Then they're brought there so that yeah. we can see her coming out looking very spry. You know. yeah, what happened? Wow, there's our goddess. Look, I'm perfectly fine. I feel great. I mean, I have pneumonia. She just went and lay down in some like hyperbaric chamber. See here that they hadn't told everyone Eight she had pneumonia after yet. After this so. first happened, they finally tell oh, us. Oh, here's about pneumonia, the sweetie. Give me pneumonia. pneumonia that was, that All right, that's good. Friday. Let's stop it. Look, folks, they think you're an idiot. They think we're idiots. We're not. This whole thing is unraveling. This is spectacular. The big question is. What are they going to pull next? What are they going to pull next? Well, they're going to try and say it's pneumonia, pneumonia. The health history, uh, the, the health mystery is solved. It was pneumonia. Okay, we can all, you know, get back to work. And maybe she'll take the next two weeks off so she can be there and, and do the debates. But what if she has... She needs the next two weeks off for the, exactly Sympathy. for the pneumonia. Sympathy what if she vote. collapses during the debates? I had a dream about a month ago. I told people around the offices that we're, she's had a debate with Trump and like falls over. It was like going like this. And they just go, we're liberal. We have to give it to her now. She fell over. Yeah. Uh, they might make her president just because she has no brain. So my, my, I have a vision that it's just going to be Trump on stage. And then there's going to be like a computer monitor with a screen with her face giving answers or whatever. Oh, yeah. Drudge with the, with the brain in the jar. <laughs> yeah. Drudge had a brain in the jar last year. Right. It's, it's, that they, that's, they, hey, by the way, I know Drudge only does interviews every three four years. And if it is to us, it's got to be somebody, man. I mean, please show back up. Come be interviewed by teleportation or by hologram. <laughs> it's time in this compressed time module. One year is like five years now, Drudge. Drudge must appear. Yes. Start doing a ritual. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, speak, it in, speak it into existence. And I, exactly. <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm telling you, stuff's getting crazy. Uh, yeah. I got a few other clips I want to play. Five minutes into overdrive, I'm going to hand the baton to David Knight. But other points. Go ahead, Leanne. Well, I just think it'll be very interesting to see, you know, over the next two weeks. I appreciate how Donald Trump isn't allowing this health thing to derail him because, you know, they wanted to move. They wanted to move on from that basket of deplorables comment quickly. But, you know, they were like the fainting. That wasn't how we wanted. to. But do you on. think this is staged? I don't think it is. Oh, no way. Heck no. They're it's kind of like jumping from one horrible landmine to the next. Exactly. Let's change the subject. No, wait, no, not to that. <laughs> yeah, no, that this was definitely not staged. She was trying to get out of there as quickly as possible. Does this portend a Trump victory or do they assassinate Trump? Oh. Hmm. I don't know. I, I think he's got the high ground right now. After her deplorable remarks, the fact that if you go on Twitter, I'd say 90% of my followers have now changed their name to like Deplorable Chris or, you know, <laughs> Caitlin the Deplorable. Like, Can we get yeah. Deplorable her, Jones her, her, yeah. on her, the website right yeah. now? Get up, guys. Her, 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 now, entire, now, now, now. her entire Deplorable campaign backfired right. so horribly. And the internet, the the millennials, the, the, the alt-right, everyone's kind of waking up. To everyone this. wants to be deplorable. Yeah, I'm deplorable. Yeah, I'm Hillary happily Clinton deplorable. Hillary Clinton isn't deplorable, <laughs> then I want to be deplorable. I'm happily she deplorable. The new series. Bad person. Triple X, the deplorable. <laughs> Are you deplorable? <laughs> no, actually, they're such evil people that we're deplorable to them. Not that we're on some high horse, but we're not out to get anybody. We just want the truth. That's all we're looking for. We're not out to screw anybody over. We don't think they're the smartest guy in the world like Hillary's, you know, minion, whatever his name is. We'll be back in 70 seconds with the fourth hour. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. All right, my friends. I want to just put in caps on this, the hand of the thought of the great David Knight. Very historic time to be alive, but... It's good to see their lies imploding, but it's also really scary to have them talking about spending elections. I just say go ahead with it and let them put in whatever little commie they want or whatever. Just let's, get, let's just get Trump in there. But if they're this corrupt, you know they'll try to steal the election. Ever since Hillary's alt-right speech, 
mean, it's been going down, but I mean, it's taken a huge decline. When she spoke the name, right. you dare not speak? Yes. <laughs> we shall not say <laughs> this shall name. shall not be named. The but, dark heart evil one. Oh, Jones. Oh. <laughs> Obama's just the Texas creature. And I was like, oh. You I, mean in places like it, Texas? It's turned Twitter into this new battleground of the alt-right really just ripping into her all day, every day. You, you, you can't even go through the trending hashtags without seeing something that's anti-Hillary. Mm -hmm. You know, Hillary's health. Where's Hillary? Crooked Hillary. Lock her up. Hillary for prison. I mean, everyone's seeing this, and it's starting to open up people's eyes. Right. And people who might not be informed on as well as we are are seeing these hashtags, clicking on it, and watching these people who are on there, like Paul Joseph Watson and stuff, and really kind of learning and watching these videos and reading these articles and finding out how bad she is. Right, and it's, that's that. those are the hashtags that Twitter allows to start trending because it's it's so interesting that even with all of the censorship on Twitter, Google, Facebook, all of the, they're even- That's really the key. Instagram page. We're beating the AI suppression. Go ahead, Leah. Even with all the news mm -hmm. establishment outlets, all the newspapers, the internet, television, everything, even with all of that, they're still losing. That's powerful. That's awesome. Well, you look at the mainstream reporters, they look like they've had their ass kicked. I mean, they look freaked out. Yeah. Because they know more than we do. They're right next to Hillary. She's probably falling over every 10 minutes. I mean, you see, like, we go cover, like, she's in a tent, medical tent. They're all freaking out with ambulances, and she comes out all coughing. I mean, imagine, they know the truth. This lady might be on the edge of death. I, it, what kind of, it, it takes a special person to know that this kind of corruption is going on, that this woman's health is really as bad as we've said it's been, and they can sit there and bite their tongue and not say anything? Like, how do you even right. sleep at night? Yeah, because they 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 have to elect her, and that's where the whole Never Trump movement you know, they'll, they would rather have someone like Hillary Clinton come in and destroy the country even further uh, because they're on some high horse. The U.N.'s coming in to take over the Internet. We have DHS who wants to run the election. I mean, this is completely and totally just mm -hmm. After saying it's insane, the feds aren't involved in the election. I'm, I'm insane. Yeah. Yeah. We it's another conspiracy. But it shows how weak they are. I mean, we've got a big audience and everything, but they just respond to everything now. They're totally freaked out. Yeah. Well, it's because they, they're not getting real news. I mean, they get it from us. Well, and I think, too, going back to the whole kind of spiritual aspect of it, we are definitely moving out of the time where darkness and fear and everything is so powerful and moving into a time of enlightenment where people are awakened. Humanity is rising. And so that's why we've seen them put their plans in overdrive because they know there's just this limited window of time where they can. And then their champion control. is a brain damaged war criminal. Right. But if I was like evil, I'd put my best people in, you know? Well, she didn't, it's read, like, she didn't read the fine print on the contract where she sold her soul to the devil for power. A deplorable, lifeless she doll. She didn't read the fine print, you know? So that she's like, wait a minute, I was supposed to seal the deal here, become powerful. You promised once I boiled all those cats <laughs> and <laughs> ate the babies. Got to read the fine print, make deals you know. with the devil. <laughs> yeah, I'm not making any deals with the old Diablo, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, fabulous job. The InfoWars Nightly News coming up tonight. It's going to be power packed. Seven o'clock Central. Our reporters and writers, everybody from Kit Daniels to Don Salazar to Mikhail Thelen to Paul Watson to Steve Watson to uh, everybody else. I'm not even mentioning that are so incredibly awesome, like Kellen McBreen, and I, I can't thank everybody. But the rest of the great crew tonight, seven o'clock Central. InfoWars Nightly News. Find details at infowars.com forward slash show. Prison Planet. Dot TV. I'm going to come hand the baton. Just someone to talk to me. Get his take on things. Uh, with uh, David Knight, he's going to take over. Great job, crew. We celebrated with <laughs> fried chicken and sweet potatoes. Such a deplorable oh, thing to Collard do. Collard greens. Because <laughs> I love how it tastes. It was I'll be a basket of deplorable. Used to being racist and evil. All right, you guys are awesome. I'm from the South, folks. Stay with us. <laughs> Let's go over some headlines. And I'm going to say greetings to David Knight. And punch out of here and move on to my other work today. Antibiotic resistant bacteria seen for the first time. That's up on InfoWars.com. The incredible film shows the evolution of bacteria as it changes to fight different strengths of antibiotics in the lab. Former British PM David Cameron resigns as MP with immediate effect. His legacy was ruined overnight when his gamble to keep Britain in the EU. Failed spectacularly. Another globalist operation gets blown wide open. Continuing, James Wolves, the CIA director under Bill Clinton, joins Trump campaign. He claims he wants to fight the jihadis and stuff. I tell you, this guy is pretty serious. That's one of the big problems I see with the Trump operation. But the globalists are against Trump. This is a move that's more seen as hawkish, but we'll see what unfolds with that.
Woolsey is a piece of work. He also is uh, trying to star in the new Nosferatu film. I mean, let me tell you, talk about central casting. But you should attack folks for how they look. He's an interesting fellow, though. A lot better than the CIA folks Obama's got in, but that ain't saying much. Uh, facial recognition technology used in Chinese classroom to check boredom levels. Before you say that's a big police state of the London Telegraph, six years ago in San Antonio, they put the same stuff in the lunchrooms and schools with the Pentagon running. And again, I'm not against the Pentagon in general or military, but I'm against this type of mad scientist stuff that is the true genie out of the bottle. And Pence says, I like this, I'm pro-life and I don't apologize for it. Let me be clear, people who know me know well I'm pro-life and I don't apologize for it. So that's a positive uh, on that front. And everything Dr. Steve Petrenik talked about a few weeks ago comes out. Tim Kaine hanging out with the Marxists, CIA, you name it. Uh, truly, truly sickening. Meanwhile, another Kit Daniels report on Infowars.com, very newsworthy. Report Hillary wearing anti-seizure sunglasses. We've talked a lot about this, but it shows the actual brand, epileptics wearing them, people having seizures wearing them. Uh, this is important. But man, you look at that pathetic photo of her at the 9-11 event. She is, I hate her and I don't like her. She's an evil person who stood down at Benghazi and fast and furious and counts the crimes. But it is really pathetic to see the wages of sin. Not that just being old or sick is bad. We've, that's all happened to family. It's going to happen to us. It's the great equalizer. But that she's so arrogant and thinks she's invincible but reality is starting to come home to her. And what does the mainstream media do now that they bet everything on saying she was incredibly healthy? And now it's clear it's a cover-up. I think this is a real demarcation line when you can finally say the dinosaur media has fallen. The last Brachiosaurus has fallen into the dust heap of history. The, the dust that covered the planet, I guess, that they say killed the dinosaurs has finally had their effect on them. I don't know. Uh, David Knight, uh, you know, can't wait to hear what you have to say about all this today. Uh, but overall, uh, you, you know, I know you've probably been watching a lot of the last three hours listening to it. I know you have a lot coming up. But, but before you get to what, what's coming up, do you disagree with me? Agree? How, how do you augment it? I mean, is this getting too surreal even for you? Because I'm scratching my head or I'm poking myself with a pen. Is this real? Because not only are they all stabbing themselves and shooting their own feet off, we're right at the heart of exposing them. This is like Twilight Zone, David Knight. Yeah, you know, Alex, uh, I, I, what you were saying just a few minutes ago, of course, we all get sick, we all get old. Uh, there's various issues. We've had FDR who was in a wheelchair. we got Greg Abbott who's in a wheelchair. I was worried that this might backfire. But you know what really was the problem was that Hillary Clinton cannot help herself from lying. And neither can the mainstream media. That is the most important thing to come out of here. I think that's far more important than even her health condition. Of course, her health condition is an issue. I she agree. was the one it who made it an helped issue. Abbott more that he was in a wheelchair, yeah. was honest and persevered that's right. and made us admire him. It's yeah. the lying and telling us it's not happening we're sick of. That's right. And, and even when she's got a more compelling narrative to tell, she is compelled to tell us a lie, just like what happened in Benghazi. Remember in Benghazi, she continued with this absurd narrative, even after it was exposed and laughed at, that the whole thing was a reaction to YouTube. some obscure movie that nobody had seen on YouTube that was laughable. Nobody would be offended by that. It was a joke. And yet that was supposedly uh, what had happened. She continues to lie where she could tell the truth, because that's the key thing about Hillary Clinton. She's nature. a pathological liar. Yes, exactly. She loves to deceive people. Even, you know, we look at it as like, is she really stupid or is she just uh, evil? Well, that's okay? it. I'm not, she's I'm both. She's I'm stupid and evil. Guy. I'm not some perfect <laughs> guy, but I love people learning the secrets. I love showing people how to do stuff. I love them showing me. I, but criminals, they get off on conning people. She loves it. Yeah. And, and when you look at what the media has done, okay, if we had not had uh, people on the sidewalks, and of course, this is one of the key things we see as reporters when we go to things like the Bundy Ranch standoff, and we see what happens, and we do a report, and then we see how it's completely uh, changed by people who aren't there, people who have an agenda. And people can see what happened with Hillary Clinton at that event, at trying to get into that car, how she completely collapses, and yet look at the way it was covered up by mainstream media, by MSNBC, showing little snippets there, lying about the temperature. You can look at the temperature. I've got, I snapshotted it that morning. I thought, overheated? Give me a break in New York. I said yesterday, Alex, you know, uh, 78 degrees, 40% humidity, 
12 mile per hour winds. I said, that's what we call winter here in Austin. <laughs> she, exactly. better not, she better not come that's to Texas. It's called a walk in the park, 78, <laughs> 79 degrees. That sounds yeah. awesome. Exactly. And, and if you look at it, okay, there's nobody else that is passing out. There's nobody else that's wearing those glasses, those unique glasses, those Zeiss Z1 blue lenses. I cut a report earlier about that as well. We put that up. Uh, Mike Cernovich showed that. And if you remember, we had that picture just a few days earlier on September the 8th there was that picture of Hillary Clinton sitting in the plane and you could just see her and Huma look like they're the only ones on the plane you could see them in the windows and she was again wearing those heavy uh, rimmed glasses the Fresnel lens glasses we've seen her now wearing two types of glasses that are prescribed for people who have brain injuries and are triggered into seizures by light by flashing light by stress by noise that type of thing but the the those glasses are prescribed for people who are triggered by that. And if you look at everybody around her, people in the audience, all the politicians, nobody else is wearing any sunglasses. It's not that bright in New York in September that you have to wear sunglasses. It's not like Texas again. And so all of this is indicating that she really has a condition. But what is really amazing is the way they spun this narrative, lying about it throughout the day, just as they did with Benghazi, saying that she was overheated, then saying she's fine now, then staging, as you pointed out earlier, staging the fact she would come out, talk to people, hey, I'm doing fine, having the little girl uh, sent through the crowd just as the Pope did in Washington, D.C. when he had staged. Yeah, just as the Pope staged that event with a little kid uh, who had uh, an immigration agenda and they made a big deal out of that. You don't get through the cordons of Secret Service, even the little kids don't. It's okay? totally staged, and then yeah. we're conspiracy theorists when we set it staged. I'm going to hand the baton to you, my friend. Great job. Can't wait to sit here and watch. There's a lot more tonight on the news, Infowars.com. We've got the food special, 30 40% off, ends tomorrow. Infowarsstore.com, please support us. Plus, everybody needs this. It's a win-win. 20% uh, off, Survival Shield, Nation Island X2, Vitamin Mineral Fusion, 20% uh, off on that, and so much more. Infowarsstore.com, Hillary for Prison shirts at cost, $9.95. That includes shipping, or you can pay $19.95 and support the broadcast. I want to thank all the viewers and listeners for what you've done. You are a huge part of this entire operation. We got 20% off also on the indoor air filters from Lexa Pure, water filters and all. It ends tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. We may be able to push it. But regardless, thank you for your support. Now back to David Knight in the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas. Thank you, Alex. And as I was saying, I think the most important thing coming out of this is to show that the mainstream media has been lying to us. The Clinton campaign has been lying to us. And even when they're call, caught red-handed, they continue to lie to us. That's the key thing. We now have the advantage that we have reporters everywhere because everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody's got social media. They can post this stuff. We can see what really happens. They cannot control the me the narrative. And so what they're going to have to do is try to control the Internet. They're making moves towards that. We need to be very concerned about that. I'm going to talk about this article that was uh, up on the Drudge Report, how the cops are using artificial intelligence to stop crimes before they happen. That's another aspect of this, the pre-crime aspect. That ties back into what we saw with Jade Helm. Mastering the Human Domain. We're going to talk about what's behind that. And I want to talk about Trump's reaction to all of this. Because so many times when things have happened in this campaign, I believe Trump has taken the wrong tack. For example, when he had the Sharia Khan uh, lawyer get on before Hillary Clinton, the guy who has promoted Sharia law, which is fundamentally against the principles of this country, against the Constitution, against what our military say they fight for. You have this guy get on and promote a theocracy and the most intolerant and I would say deplorable theocracy this world has ever seen, Sharia law. She chooses him on stage. And yet uh, when Donald Trump pushes back against that, he does it in a way that doesn't call him out for being a Sharia supporter. When he pushes back against the lawyer, the judge who is, I believe, acting uh, in an unreasonable way, should be recusing himself uh, from presiding over Donald Trump's case because this guy is part of a Ku Klux Klan, Hispanic Ku Klux Klan group. La Raza, the race, everything for the race, for those outside of the race, nothing. That's their, lo that's their slogan, okay? If that's your slogan, you can't get any more racist than that. And I'm sorry, but you don't get a pass on being a racist because you're Hispanic or because you're black. We should be as much against racists who are Hispanic and black as we are against racists who are white. And that's the problem. That's one of the reasons why Hillary Clinton had to come up with this new term, the basket of deplorables. 
because, you know, racist just isn't doing it anymore for her. That's the only thing she's got. She's cried wolf so many times that unfortunately she has taken that away. But on this particular case, Donald Trump has focused on her deplorables comment and ignored commenting on her health. That's a very wise thing to do. We're going to unpack that. We're going to see what her campaign is saying right now. And we're going to look at who might replace her. Who is the clean slate candidate that we're we'll bringing? The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this Monday, September 12th. Amazing weekend. Hillary Clinton is heading down. It'll be interesting to see what the polls uh, show. Of course, that we know they manipulate the polls uh, extensively, but uh, nevertheless, uh, it'll be interesting to see what they're saying at this point. It has been very interesting to watch the media try to spin this stuff after everybody in America has essentially been eyewitnesses to the event. They think they can lie to the people who saw it happen. We've seen her collapse from multiple angles. We've seen the strange uh, look, the strange sunglasses. And oh, by the way, interesting story. There was a story up on Drudge about a factory in China that is replacing workers. The workers demanded higher wages. They're being replaced by robots. We've talked about this for the longest time. So this is what's going to happen to those workers who are trying to get rich by raising the minimum wage. That simply isn't going to happen. And it isn't simply the people at the bottom of the economic scale, or it's not just one industry. This is going to be something that is going to be horizontal and vertical within our society. It's going to affect all industries. It's going to affect people at the lowest level to the highest level. And we need to think about what we're going to do to get a handle on this. The thing that's being offered to us is a universal income, which is essentially to put us all on the dole, to pacify us, to make us dependent on the government. It's one of the things I never liked about the flat tax, the idea that we were all going to get a check every year from the government, a rebate uh, for sales taxes that we paid. I thought that is a very, very bad idea. You are training people to live off of the government, to take their independence and so forth. But let's take a, a look at this, uh, this story here because it's interesting beyond the fact that they're bringing in robots to replace the human workers to cut their wages. A couple of things that are interesting about it. The first one is we've been talking about Hillary Clinton's blue sunglasses, uh, which look like uh, Zeiss Z1 blue lenses that are used to control reactions to bright light to sunlight for people who have brain damage and get seizures from that. And the company that is doing this is the same company that makes those lenses, Carl Zeiss Vision Technologies. Now, this is in Guangzhou in China. And they say that in 2012, the Zeiss Group informed us that labor in China was twice as expensive as it was in Mexico, four times what it was in India. Isn't that an interesting metric? That explains why we're having so many people come into this country from India and Mexico, right? Because China, China, think about that. You think about China getting slave wages, and their wages are nothing to brag about. They're far lower than our wages, and yet... The Mexicans, in general, get half of what the Chinese do. The Indians get half of what the Mexicans do. Isn't that amazing? That's why we're seeing so many visas being given to people coming from India. That's why you have Disneyland having the American workers of every kind, you know, white, black, Hispanic, American workers training Indian workers coming in here on visas who are going to take their jobs. So uh, I think that's a very interesting metric it's one of the things that we have to uh, pay attention to, and I think it's one of the reasons why, if we are not going to see America and the West be brought down to third world levels, which is what the multinational corporations want to do, if we're going to keep that from happening, we have to get control of our borders, and we have to change the way our countries are structured. Understand that when we went to an income tax, at the same time that we got the Federal Reserve, what they did was they took off the taxes on goods that were coming into this country. Prior, prior to that, our government was funded mostly with uh, import taxes. And it's one of the things that Thomas Jefferson was very proud of. He eliminated all internal taxing, and he had a constitutional government that was completely funded by taxes on goods and services coming into the country. We had a free trade zone, a real free trade zone within America. And we don't even have that today. You can't have insurance companies competing with each other over state lines. How about that? Can't even compete with insurance companies. So we don't have free trade within the United States, but we have to open our borders to the cheapest goods, the cheapest labor that is coming in. 
I understand the arguments for free trade. I understand the arguments that governments should not be manipulating our economy. But you understand that what is happening is the alternative that we've been presented with is that a small number of multinational corporations will be manipulating our economy. Okay? That's the reality. We can talk about the abstracts of free trade and so forth, as the libertarians like to talk about it. We can say that uh, we're going to have free trade and, and the government shouldn't be uh, setting uh, policy as to which industries or whatever are going to be rewarded. But understand that if they don't do it, the alternative that is being offered to us by the multinationals is that an unelected committee that is going to be created with these partnership agreements, the Trans-Pacific, the Transatlantic Partnership Agreements, those committees will decide which industries, which countries will be allowed to prosper and which ones will not. Will you be allowed to catch fish in your own ocean? Oh, it won't be your ocean. It will belong to the multinational corporations. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We've got a lot of news to cover here. Trump says he wants to debate Clinton without a moderator. We've got Politico making the case against James Comey, they say, comparing him to J. Edgar Hoover. That's not a good thing, especially the way they, they write it. We're going to talk about those articles as well as pre-crime. We're going to talk about who might be the clean slate candidate. Do you really know who Tim Kaine is? Do you really know who Joe Biden is? We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But before we do, you know, when Rachel Maddow came out and attacked us at Infowars.com, and she started, uh, she held up our products. We, we decided we would do the Mr. Rachel Maddow special, okay? And, and let me tell you, one of the things I remember from Phyllis Schlafly was uh, back in North Carolina, Jesse Helms was running for Senate. And some people on the left created some toilet paper with Jesse Helms's picture on it, okay? So that you could literally wipe your butt with Jesse Helms. I thought that was really funny and that was great. So they were selling rolls of toilet paper with Jesse Helms' face on each individual sheet. What Phyllis Schlafly did when she saw that was she bought several, she bought out all their roles, okay? And then she went to another spot and started selling it a sheet at a time. And she wound up selling it for a huge, as Donald Trump would say, a huge profit margin over what she had bought this from from the people, okay? So that's what we're doing with the Mr. Rachel Maddow special. Thank you, Rachel, for promoting our products. Thank you for being so transparently a liar about what was happening with Hillary Clinton's uh, health care and her health condition. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much, mainstream media, for doubling down on the lying narrative, even after it's been exposed, even after we've all seen the video. You continue to lie in our face. We've got Andrew Mitchell, who is the uh, wife of... Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan covering for the for the Clintons at every opportunity, covering for the Bushes as well. And so in all of their honor, in the spirit of Phyllis Schlafly selling the Jesse Helms T-shirts, uh, <laughs> sheets, uh, toilet, uh, toilet roll uh, sheets one at a time, we have the Rachel Maddow special, 20% off Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine, 15% off super male vitality, and no, Rachel, it will not do what you hope it will do, okay? But it does have some very good positive effects. You can read the reviews of real people who have actually used that, but it won't do, I think, what Rachel wants it to do for her. 15% off super male vitality, 15% off deep cleanse, okay? That's our special we got in honor of Rachel Maddow. Also, our preparedness special is going to be ending soon, and that has some very uh, good sales off of some very important items 30 to 40 percent off infowars select storable food that's going to last you a long time now is a time to stock up 30 to 40 percent off infowars select storable food as well as 20 percent off alexa pure air filters and 20 percent off alexa pure water filters a great time to stock up on preparedness specials at infowarsstore.com let's take a look at the deplorable comments you know, one of the things I think that Trump is doing very wisely now, as I said earlier, is he's chosen to focus on Hillary's deplorable comments. You know, she called us deplorable, but what it really does is it shows Hillary Clinton as being deplorable. Here's what he said uh, today. They say, according to USA Today, he's been focusing more on Hillary Clinton's basket of deplorables remark than on her health care situation. Trump said she divides people into baskets as though they were objects and not human beings. That is spot on. That is spot on. He said, Hillary Clinton spoke with hatred, with derision for the people who make this country run. 
He said Clinton is an insider supported by powerful insiders attacking Americans who have absolutely no political power. That is a very important, very powerful quote. He really, really nailed it. And then he goes on and says, she insulted all Americans when she said that half of his supporters could be put in a basket of deplorables that includes those who are racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it, okay? She has to come up with a new term because they have cried wolf so many times because that's all they have, folks. She can't run on her accomplishments. She can't run on her integrity. Can you imagine trying to make a case that Hillary has integrity? <laughs> I mean, you couldn't sell that, okay? And you can't sell her accomplishments either. And so what does she have but to attack viciously people? But I want you to think about what she's doing here. And there, there's a great article from the Foundation for Economic Education. They took this on directly. You know, Donald Trump said, uh, you're treating these people as if they're objects, not human beings. Okay, You're treating them with hatred, with derision, with bigotry. And this is what the Foundation for Economic Education they sa said. They said, no one is deplorable. No one is irredeemable. That was the other thing that she had to say. And uh, they say seeing someone or some group of people as deplorable or irredeemable is a starting point for coercing them, and that can lead to initiating violence against them. That's what we're concerned about when we see Hillary Clinton doing this. You know, you assassinate people's character or a group of people's character, and then you go after them. Okay? That's what Obama did, isn't it? With his bitter clingers comment. Those gun owners, those bitter clingers to their guns and their Bibles. He hates this country. You know, as a matter of fact, it was Obama who, on his recent trip to Asia, trashed America 18 times. You've probably seen uh, the articles about that. I mean, he hates all America, okay? Not just the people who are his political opponents. He trashes all of America. And think about, you know, the fortune cookie game we used to play. Remember when they used to, when the fortune cookies used to really be fortune cookies instead of lectures? Uh, that's all I get anymore when I, I get the fortune cookies. But I used to say, such and such is going to happen to you. And you would you know, put a little phrase after it, like, you know, in bed or something like that as a joke. Okay, well, let's think about what Obama said about us as he was trashing America yet again in Asia 18 times. So just read a couple of these. I'm going to add after it, each one of these, after eight years of Obama. Okay, first thing he said, there are still too many poor children in the United States after eight years of Obama. Too many children in America are not getting enough to eat after eight years of Obama. Despite America's wealth, we're not providing sufficient educational resources in poor communities after eight years of Obama. Americans lack the potential political will to help poor inner cities that have suffered discrimination after eight years of Obama. America still has situations where women are not treated equally after eight years of Obama. See, he thinks all of the U.S. is deplorable and lazy. That was one of his favorite phrases. I didn't read that in any of those. But let's go back to Hillary Clinton and this whole idea that people are deplorable. As I said in the Foundation for Economic Education article, think about, for example, how they have demonized all drug users and think that they should be incarcerated for nonviolent possession of narcotics. Whenever you see a fellow human as being rather a thing or an it, which is precisely what Donald Trump said. He said, you're treating them as treating people as objects and not human beings. And so what uh, Fee, Foundation for Economic Education, is saying, you know, when you see a fellow human being as a thing or as an it, it makes all the difference. Peter Bregan, in his book, Beyond Conflict, said, to say that people are beings is to invest them with sacred meaning, with special and viable importance. And he goes on to say, to love humans, to experience them as beings, means recognizing their intrinsic worth. Love, as I'm defining it, is therefore unconditional, not contingent on anything particular about the individual who is loved, but rather love reaches to the essence of the individual, the beingness, and sees their inherent value. The value in each human is unearned because it is inherent. We all have inherent worth. No one is irredeemable. Hillary, Hillary, and yet, what did she do? She doubled down on the comments, okay? She came out and gave a non-apology when she said, expressed some regret on Saturday uh, for these comments that she made. And, you know, where she made them, interestingly enough, you know, at the same time, she's, she's calling Trump's supporters deplorable and irredeemable at an LGBT fundraiser. Donald Trump, coincidentally, 
didn't have it planned. It wasn't a reaction. He's talking about freedom of religion, freedom of choice. He's talking about how Christians are being demonized. He's talking to Christians about how they're, you're being demonized while she is doing it, proving his point. How's that for timing? Is that a God thing or what? I mean, we look at the situation, you know, Cyrus, whether Donald Trump is a Christian or not, God can use non-Christians. You go back to the Old Testament, at one point, uh, God comes to a, uh, a, 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 a king, Cyrus. He's not, uh, he's not part of Israel. But he says, I'm going to take you by the hand. I'm going to do something for Israel, okay? And maybe that's what's happening with Trump. I don't know. But I tell you what, when you look at the timing of this, when you look at what happened this week at 9-11, <laughs> she has a 9-1-1 event, and the whole, the whole world is watching and sees what happens and sees the lies and the hypocrisy of the mainstream media as she is demonizing people in a way that we know, we know what Obama did. You know, he called us bitter clingers. He says, I'm going to bankrupt coal. He did. He bankrupted coal. He says, I don't like these people with uh, their, their guns and their Bibles, okay? And he comes after the conservatives using the IRS, doing it openly, doing it with impunity, that kind of corruption. And you know that Hillary Clinton, as bigoted, as hateful, as Machiavellian as she is, when she talks about this, you know that she's going to come after people. And I would say the other Democrats as well, because it's not just her. She came back and she said, you know, I was wrong. I shouldn't have said half. And her supporters picked up on that. I think she really meant all. When she came back, I think that was a non-apology. And her supporters, James Kirchick in the Daily News says, how many of Donald Trump supporters belong in a basket of deplorables? Well, almost all of them. She was right to do so, he said. It's not 50% of Trump supporters who are bigots. It's closer to 100%. Then we see the same thing from Slate. Do half of Trump's supporters really belong in a basket of deplorables? Yes, says Jamil Bowie. He's the political correspondent for Slate. And, of course, we played the clip earlier of uh, the other woman who said the same thing. There's all of the liberal media who is lying for Hillary now about the health issues, lied for her before, covered for her before, never wanted to ask her questions, never criticized her for going, what is it now, 282 days since she's had a real press conference? This stuff that, you know, rolling oranges to her on the plane or having uh, some timid uh, sycophants on the plane in the back, uh, that doesn't count as a press conference. Sorry, she hasn't had a press conference this entire presidential campaign. And now she's not even able physically to have her fundraising events. They're saying, and this is a, a string of um, tweets that were put out uh, from the media, from the Hillary Clinton campaign by Reuters. Uh, you got Andrea Mitchell you know, covering for her again. We will be releasing additional medical information about Hillary over the next few days. Yeah, I bet they will, or maybe they won't. Uh, Hillary Clinton canceling planned fundraising events. Uh, this is, uh, says, uh, and they also come out, uh, Andrea Mitchell, who is I guess she is now the Hillary Clinton campaign spokesperson. She's so tight, so close to these people on the inside. She says, they say there's no other undisclosed conditions. Pneumonia is the extent of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, the Daily News said that Clinton's cover story for her pneumonia diagnosis further proves that her first instinct is to lie. And as I said earlier, it's the same pattern we saw with Benghazi. The fact that they would change the story multiple times and, and do it shamelessly. Okay, first uh, she's overheated, now she's fine, now she's coming out, and now she's got pneumonia, but oh, and now she can't do anything for the rest of the week after she came out and said she was fine. Okay, if she's got pneumonia, folks, and of course they're now saying that her campaign uh, uh, manager, Robbie Mook, has pneumonia as well, because you know, I guess he won't be able to talk to anybody. <laughs> yes, like, conveniently came down with pneumonia. Did you hear any congestion when she spoke? No. Yeah. No, did her, she sound hoarse or anything? Did she show any outward signs of that? No, no. Uh, and then they double down. They say um, that, uh, well, we think we could have handled uh, the medical episode a little bit better. All right, let's talk about who might replace her. We've got Cokie Roberts saying this morning on NPR, Morning Edition, people are angry at the lack of transparency. <laughs> There's never been any transparency with Hillary Clinton. The only thing transparent about her was her glass when you saw her spit those wads in it the other day. And, of course, that's going to end now. We're not going to have any more transparent, even glasses around Hillary Clinton. I guess it'll be a condition just like, you know, you got to have multiple pillows stacked up around her and all the other uh, things that you have to have to prop her up in the chairs. Now you're going to have to have opaque cups and glasses. But Cokie Roberts said people are angry at the lack of transparency. It was hours before the pneumonia diagnosis was revealed. 
after seeing this incredibly damaging video of her being helped and stumbling into a van, and now they are lying about the consequences of that in addition, okay? They're still saying, it didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen, okay? But who would, re who would replace her? Well, of course, the obvious replacement is Senator Tim Kaine. And The Hill talked about his radical roots. Uh, Joe Biggs uh, touched on it earlier when he talked about liberation theology. This is something that the Jesuits in Central and South America uh, pushed quite a bit, especially back in the 1980s. We had the uh, previous pope uh, push back against liberation theology, said it is at odds with the church. Uh, we don't want anything to do with it. And yet this particular pope that we have now comes out of those roots. This pope that we have now is friendly to liberation theology, to the environmentalism and the socialism and the globalism that it pushes. He is also a Jesuit. He is also like Tim Kaine. And this article from The Hill by Ken Blackwell says, Tim Kaine took a life-transforming mission trip to Latin America in 1980. Remember, he talked about that. He said, hey, that's how, where I learned to speak Spanish. You know, I was a missionary, okay? What did he do as a missionary? Was he really there trying to Tell people about Jesus? No. He was pushing Marxism. As Ken Blackwell points out, he says, whatever Cain's intention, he more likely met Karl Marx than Jesus Christ while he was in Latin America. He embraced liberation theology. It was a radical Marxist-based ideology at odds with the church, the Pope at the time, and the U.S., but it was supportive of and supported by the Soviet Union. Oh. Oh. When they see Russians everywhere, right? And yet... They're the socialists. Okay, understand how that works? It's like the, you know, blue and red colors that they put everybody on. Okay, that's, uh, they always do just the opposite. He goes on to say, journalistic and academic research has now shown that liberation theology itself was quite possibly a product of a Kremlin disinformation campaign designed to undermine the church and to bring Catholic countries into the Soviet sphere. The top-ranking Soviet bloc defector of the Cold War, General and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Ion Pasepa admits that he was personally involved in the operation. Okay, in 2005, Pope Francis discussed liberation theology. He said, uh, after the collapse of real socialism, these currents of thoughts were plunged into confusion and capable of either radical reformulation or new creativity. They survived by inertia. Okay, now, what happened with Tim Kaine specifically that I think is very interesting he went to Nicaragua, and things were getting so bad in Honduras that they expelled the Jesuits. And this fellow asked in the article, he says, just how hardcore were the Jesuit teachers that Tim Kaine was under? He says, well, around the time Kaine was there, Jesuits were arrested for gun running. Gun running. Oh, remember this, because I'm going to come back to gun running Tim Kaine. The next year, the Honduran government banned any more American Jesuits from coming to that country because of their left-wing activism. They also expelled one particular American-born Jesuit, a priest named Father Jim Carney from New York. Okay? Uh, I'm sorry. He was from, the New York Times tells us that Kaine sought him out across the border to Nicaragua that was supported by the Soviet Union. In 1983, this former priest, Jim Carney, was part of a 96-man unit that invaded Honduras to bring the Nicaraguan communist revolution there, too. After a firefight, he was killed. This was the man that Cain was looking for. This violent, Marxist, revolutionary, Jesuit, libertarian theology guy. Who, what is the key thing? Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and... I want to go back to Tim Kaine, because whether or not he is going to be the clean candidate that is brought in from Hillary Clinton, he is still going to be the vice president of somebody who's got a lot of health issues, who is very elderly. He needs to be looked at very carefully. Before I go back to him, though, just want to remind you that this is your last chance to prepare with Super, with uh, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. 20% off at InfoWarsLife.com. We're going to have to take that down pretty soon. We're about to sell out of that. Now, more than ever, it is time to prepare your family with things like water, food, heirloom seeds, and Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. Take advantage of this 20% uh, sale that we have now, as well as we have 30 to 40% off select storable foods at InfoWarsStore.com. Now is the time to prepare. 20% off Alexa Pure air filters and water filters. Take a look at what we have. Look at the reviews that are there. Take advantage of these Mega specials for preparedness. They won't last much longer. Let's go back to what I was talking about with Tim Kaine. Okay? Here's a guy 
who, as I was talking about, at the time he was there, you had these radical communist Catholic Jesuit priests who were pushing something that had absolutely no, nothing to do with, uh, with Catholicism. It was something that was being pushed as uh, former uh, Soviet uh, defectors said. This is a way of turning South America to the Soviet Union at the time. They were fomenting revolution in Nicaragua. A guy, Jim Carney, who was a former priest, left, became an armed revolutionary, 96-man unit, goes into Honduras, invades it, he is killed as part of that firefight. And yet this is the guy, this is the guy that Jim Kane was looking for, said he went to look for. Now, what did he do after he became governor? What is he known for? Surprisingly, gun control, gun control. This guy is New American Reports, uh, Hillary's running mate, Kane, is a staunch anti-gunner. And why would that be surprising? These people who want to confiscate our guns, what do they do? They create fast and furious in order to demonize the Second Amendment. They create a massive arms bazaar in Benghazi for ISIS. They arm ISIS, and they want to take your weapons away from you, right? What did he do in Virginia? New American reports, Virginia's junior senator, Senator Tim Kaine, first earned public notoriety for his anti-gun ideology in 2000, when, as mayor of Richmond, he spent $7,000 of city funds to ship eight busloads of anti-gun supporters to Washington, D.C. to support the so-called Million Mom March. Yeah, he's one of the primary original backers of the Million Mom March. The outcry in Richmond, where he was mayor at the time, was so vociferous that he was forced to ask for private donations to repay the theft. Okay, this is the hypocrisy of these people. Okay, as her running mate, just this last June... They say Cain was at it again. He announced his support in the Senate for efforts to allow the federal CDC, Center for Disease Control, to use taxpayer funds to advocate for gun control. So he's using the CDC to advocate for gun control now, in June 2016. This guy wants to take your guns. He is a Marxist. He's a Marxist. Who else, though? Okay, it might also be Joe Biden. They want to have somebody with a clean slate. Understand that Hillary Clinton has been hammered. She has a long, long history. She had a lot of mud and dirt on her from what she had done. People knew that. It's been resurrected. But Donald Trump, in a very short time, with a very crowded field, has had the same thing happen to him. They want to get her out. And it would be very difficult, I think, for Donald Trump to run against a Joe Biden or against a Tim Kaine that people don't know anything about. Let me tell you real quickly, about at a time. My recollection of Joe Biden, first time I heard him, was for attacking Clarence Thomas in the confirmation hearings for having the audacity to believe in the concept of natural rights, that we as human beings possess these rights. They're not granted by government. That's the essence of America, the essence of the Declaration of Independence. Joe Biden hates that idea. Join us tonight for the InfoWars Nightly News, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.